side. Cameron White scores! Last weekend, the Mavericks traveled to Anchorage, Alaska to face off with the Seawolves. After a 7-1 blowout win on Friday, on Saturday, the Mavericks cracked the egg in the last minute of game time and scored twice to come away with a tie in OT. It will be pushed up front, shot by Mackey, stepped out, and the Mavericks score! The inside and a rebound! Your Mavericks are back home this weekend to take on the Northern Michigan Wildcats. Will the Mavericks widen the gap in the standings? Or will the Wildcats look to knock off the top-rated team in the WCHA? Your Minnesota State Mavericks up next. Moving into the last month of the regular season, we have a battle of top 15 teams tonight for you from Mankato, as it's Minnesota State and Northern Michigan coming up next on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Good evening, I'm Don Westfall, joined by Dan McCarger. And Dan, even though we're not in the playoffs yet, we should have a playoff fever pitch to this one tonight. It's a big weekend for both clubs. Obviously, the Mavericks in the standings looking to put some distance between themselves and Bemidji State. And for Northern Michigan, who, with Bemidji State being off this weekend, they go to Bemidji next, or actually they host Bemidji next weekend. They can climb right in the battle, maybe for first, certainly for second. Well, there's no question about it. This weekend is huge for them. The Mavericks can get some separation, but if they sweep this weekend, They'll go into next weekend down a point to the Beavers and down six points to the Mavericks. So you'll have three teams within six points of first place. Especially with the Mavericks coming up. They're off next weekend, so they only have two more regular season series in which to gain points, so it puts even a little more importance on this one. Mavericks coming to this one, Dan, had an incredible finish the last time they were in the ice in Alaska. It's getting to be too much, of though. Uh, Saturday night's down 2 nothing in the third period. We need to stop doing that. I think everybody be uh, fine, you know, if you come back and win those games, but... Uh, it's going to catch up to you sometimes, so hopefully the Mavericks get a win tonight and have a comfortable lead going into the third period tomorrow night so everybody can relax a little bit. In case you hadn't heard, the Mavericks actually, after an opening night win, came back with two goals with the pulled goaltender in the last minute of the contest. The last goal, who literally us in the second left to tie, and then they get the extra point in overtime on the game winner, shall we say, by side. Let's hear from the coaches, Mike Hastings for the Mavericks, and for Northern Michigan, Grant Patelny. Good first start, you know, and... and I know that you and I talk about this every time we sit down, but for us to get the people in the building into the game, for us to feel uh, we can play with the lead, uh, because we haven't done a lot of that as of late. And so I think our first start, winning that special team battle, uh, making sure, you know, can we keep that line? Can we keep Lauren's line off? the score sheet because if you do that I think you're asking for some other guys to step up and uh, most guys that score a lot of points they're not real happy when they don't so uh, I think that's a piece for us and then we're gonna have to win the battle between the posts so uh, a lot of things that we've talked about but again an opportunity for us to grow tonight and we look forward to the challenge yeah well I mean I think you you look at that team and the, you know hey when you come into the league you know, coming from, from Minnesota now to Northern, and you, you want to replicate who the, the top of the hill is, and they've been the top of the hill for a long time. They have great forward depth. They're long and strong on the back end, and, and they've gotten great goaltending. And to me, the diff, you know, for us, the biggest thing is how do you start the game? And, you know, when we've played them and, and uh, come out on the wrong side of it, and more than, than we have the right side, it's been the first periods. And uh, when we've had success, we've had good starts to the game and um, had them to defend a little bit, and, and that's going to be a big key for us this weekend. So we thank the coaches for their involvement here on the Maverick pregame show, of course, sponsored by Coldwell Banker Commercial Fisher Group. Let's talk about some of the players on the ice now that we look forward to talking about. We're going to go with honor winners on both sides for the Mavericks. We're going to talk about defensemen. Connor Mackey actually has won the last two Defensemen of the Week awards in the WCHA. Had five points last weekend in that series up in Alaska, including tie or an assist in both of those goals in the Saturday night game. And also had on the weekend, along with four assists, the one goal. And on the other side for the Wildcats, we're going to talk about not only the two-time winner as far as the weekly forward of the week winner goes, we're going to talk about the guy who got the 
won award for the month. Darian Craighead had 13 points on the month of January, including uh, eight goals along with five assists. Actually had a hat trick last Friday night in a 5-2 win against Ferris State. Dan, we've singled out a couple players, but literally on either one of these clubs, we could have picked from about 10 guys uh, coming in. You know, Northern Michigan, Grant Lofren has, he's the leading goal scorer in the country with 20 goals on a year. Craighead's big. Mavericks, of course, coming back with Parker Toomey. They get Jeremko in the line tonight. Both teams are really set for what should be a marquee game. Yeah, no question about it. And the Mavericks are starting to get healthy. They don't have Michaelis back uh, for tonight. I don't know about tomorrow night, but uh, some of the players that didn't play last weekend will be back tonight, including Jeremko. That should make a difference. Good time to get healthy. It's a good time for you to have you here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. We'll take a break, and when we come back, it's the opening face-off from Mankato. Don Westfall and Dan McCarger back here in downtown Mankato, the Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center. Set for the first of the two-game series. Mavericks off next weekend, and then we're back with you in two weekends to the Mavericks as they close out the regular season against Alabama Huntsville. Mike Hastings in his eighth season behind the bench here for Minnesota State. And, of course, on the other side, Grant Patoni, his third year with the Wildcats. Spent many years as an assistant with the Gophers, a team that he actually helped win National Championship with. In fact, scored the scored game winner. The game winning goal in the National Championship game. Yep. He's done a great job here with the Wildcats. In fact, last couple of years, their first back to back 21 seasons in over a decade as you see our starting goaltenders tonight. You know, see 2.57 goals against you go, that's having a great year. Then you look to the right and you go, well, that's ridiculous. Dryden McKay at 1.366. Ridiculous it is. In fact, those numbers good enough to lead uh, the country, not just the WCHA, but the country, and just about most every goaltending statistic as you see our officials assigned by the WCHA for the weekend. Once again the, uh, that was Daniel Kovarik and Josh Lupinick with Matt Tyree and Kevin Cassidy and again for the Wildcats Dan, it's, it's a big opportunity with the Bemidji State Beavers off and again as we just mentioned in the pregame they host Bemidji State coming into the contest tonight. Uh, one weekend series behind if they can get uh, even uh, three points would be huge obviously but if they can get all six they're in a virtual tie with the Beavers then, and then it's kind of who knows what's going to go on the last few weeks of the regular season. They'd still have a great opportunity, not just for home ice the first couple of rounds, but still looking for that WCHA regular season championship. Don't remember the last time where the Mavericks were swept on the home ice, though. Does uh, not happen. It, it would uh, be a heck of a task, but if they did it, uh, the WCHA is, uh, is wide open for three teams going into the final couple weekends. Shot down low, it's laying there and finally swept aside as Craighead was going after, but he was tied up on the play. Volton with another quick shot and Dryden McKay with the glove save, which allows us to bring you the keys to tonight's contest. Mike Hastings keys the contest tonight. First 10 minutes, he thinks they're incredibly important. He'd like to see his team get off to a fast start right away. Uh, leave the box empty. Said the team that stays out of the box this weekend probably is going to win and get to the Wildcat defense. They've got some younger defenders that he thinks that uh, they can make some plays on this weekend. So we'll see how that works out, but uh, he really wants to get off to a good start tonight. Both these teams average and actually over three and a half goals a contest. Out in front, another look down low for the Wildcats. Mavericks uh, about 3.7. That's good for fifth in the country. 3.5 is good enough for seventh place for Northern Michigan. Gontus back the other way. Gets pushed wide of the net. French back there along with Mackey, about six players in that scrum. Joseph Nardi along the boards, picked up by Rivera, still held in the zone, however. Nardi trying to pick it up, and finally it's McNeely for the Mavericks. Sandland. Coach Patoli said they have to be physical this weekend, so we expect to see uh, a lot of checking by Michigan, Northern Michigan this weekend. French carried into the zone. That shot is up. Out of the glove of Kent, but he'll just cover up on the play. Good to have a familiar face back in the lineup tonight, Dan. Yeah, Jake Jeremko, first game back since January 11th. Uh, he was really starting to come into form until he got injured. Uh, starting to be the Jake Jeremko we remembered from his freshman year. And uh, if he gets back to where he was earlier in late December, early January, that will really help out this team. Jeremko back, French, we've already mentioned his name in the lineup again. Naprovnik is back tonight, so really for the most part we're down to injuries for Michaelis and don't really have a clear indication when he might be back. And then Souter, uh, you know, maybe on a whim tomorrow night, certainly in a couple of weeks, that break will help both of those guys. 
Gerard for Hukinson. He'll fire it in down low. It got redirected out in front, and it's pushed just wide. Out in front one more time. Score! Reggie Lutz almost had it the first time. Got forced wide on the near side. The centering pass on top of the crease. Lutz did not make a mistake the second opportunity. Well, there was just a scramble out in front. Lutz finally was able to finish. Yeah, you watch the puck kind of trickle through the crease area here as we look at it. And you think, oh, man, that's a tough break. But he gets right back out in front. And Reggie Lutz with the finish. And the Mavericks out to the early lead. Just what Mike Hastings ordered. And you can't leave a player like that right on top of the crease. And that's what they did. Reggie Lutz with the goal. Now his 10th of the season becomes the fourth Maverick with double-digit goal tallies on the season. 2-0-1, the time of the opening score of the weekend. Oh, they had Toomey on. I thought it was Lutz out front, but they had Toomey on the goal. So correction on that. Hukinson and Lutz are picking up the assist on the goal that's now been credited to Toomey. I'd like to see that again. Who knows? That might change one yeah. more time. They might be taking a look at it over on the other side, but uh, we know most importantly the Mavericks with the goal. You are correct. There was definitely a finish on the goal. Now, that's Reggie Lutz. That's 16. <laughs> Reggie Lux scored the goal for the Mavericks. They'll get it right. Okay. I believe it would then it's Charlie Girard, maybe who can send on this is. Well, you know what? We're not going to guess. We'll just make the official call to come through the public address announcer. And again, the Mavericks, no matter what, with the first goal of the weekend. Zmolik. Our side for Smith. Goes up one nothing. good guys, as they say, <laughs> so that's what matters. I agree. Toomey with it. Carries to the center ice. Toomey still with it. Shot there. Gets armed aside. The Provnik after the long with Philip Blue. Back to the point for Connor Mackey. Down low. Gets redirected on the tip away from Dallas Durant, who still had an opportunity. Now we're going to get a penalty against the Mavericks. That might be a holding or interference call against Durant. Open net on the other side for the extra attacker, but Spooner picks up the play for the Mavericks. And the Mavericks will go to the box for the first time on the penalty to Gerads at 315. Well, that's not what you want. You know, after you get up one nothing, the thing you don't want to do is go right to the box, give the uh, opponent a chance to come back and tie you up here. We'll get a look at it, though, I believe, right here. Battling it in the corner. Uh, I think nope. it's going to be right yeah, there, there. There you are. Yep. Yep. And the hand went yep. up. Mavericks on the penalty kill, third in the country, killing off about 90 and a half percent of the opponent's opportunities. Power play for the Wildcats, 24 for 124 at 19.4 percent. Coaches are never satisfied with their special teams. So you know what? You could have killed off uh, 15 to 16. They say you know, but we gave up that one three weeks ago that uh, really hurt us. So. Uh, you can always be better in your special teams, and Mavericks hoping to kill this one off. Holding officially is the call against Gerads, and especially the problem with that penalty is it came so far yeah. away from your own defensive zone. I mean, I get the fact you're trying to be aggressive on the four check, but chance here for the Wildcats to cut into the, any momentum the Mavericks would have built. Philip Ballou to the far side. That one's blocked by Rivera. Big shot taken off the stick of Vincent DeMay. One of three Wildcats with hat tricks on the season. That leads the country. And that's statistic team-wise. Down low, quick shot and a glove save. Popped right out of there. Blue has it one more time to the far side for DeMay. Blue up on top. Craighead. Blue at the line. Mavericks trying to just keep things, obviously, on the exterior. DeMay on the backhand. Now plays it down behind the net for Griffin. Lochran, blue in the top of the slot down low, and that one's kicked into the corner by McKay, who has had a very busy first period of play. Blue Craighead, that one is again down low in the body. Rebound is there, but it floats wide on the near side, still in the zone. Wildcats, one more long shot. The Mavericks blocked that with Rivera. 
That one is flipped out, and apparently, Dan, the book from the Wildcats yeah. is get it to the point at the top of the and slot. And wind shoot, up. Shoot. Yep. Try to almost force it through some bodies, and the Mavericks successful there with a couple of blocks and, of course, about three saves from McKay. Down to 40 seconds left in the power play. Newhouse drops it back. Brandon Schultz carries into the zone. Watched by Hookinson. Up on top for Sorensen. Second group on the ice for Northern Michigan. Bolton in the slot. Tries the one-timer that was fanned on. Poked into the corner by Zmolik. He plays it along the boards and past Newhouse. And that should do it with about 10 seconds remaining in the power play for the Wildcats. Really nothing open in the middle of the ice at all so far for the Wildcats on the power play. Sorensen trying to feed the slot, but it comes wide. Mavericks back at full strength. Provnik will carry the center ice. Play down low for Carroll with the shot. That one does not miss by much on the far side. Scheid is there. Played off a body out to center ice. So Mavericks will have to regroup. Carroll one more time. Low angle shot. Dallas Gerads with the rebound. Face off circle shot is blocked. And now picked up by Gerads. Still in the zone. Gerads down low. Smith. The Provnik one times one. And he fanned on his attempt. Wildcats had a chance to get it clear. And it nearly cost them a goal when they weren't able to get it out. Sorensen's back with Newhouse. Long lead pass up for Klee. Dumped in the zone. Carroll. Spooner. Dewar is able to just kind of keep it along the boards. And the Mavericks clear, but Yeremko is back with it. Mavericks with the lead set up, and they'll carry out to center ice with Connor Mackey, WCHA's defenseman of the week. Dewar down low. It's kicked wide of the net. Shots on goal are 8 to 6 already. 13 25 to go in the first period of play. We've had periods since yeah. Christmas where we haven't had that many yep. shots. And it's been physical. There have been games where the Mavericks haven't allowed more than six shots in a game. Lochran, country's leading goal scorer, has it tipped away from him. Zmolik is back now with Scheid. Rink wide, and Rivera has it in the zone. He's ridden off the play. Uremko is behind the net, now French has it, and Scheid tees one up and sends it wide. Zmolik will tap it behind the net. Rivera tries to sweep it out front, has it on the back end, tries to force it out front. Top of the crease, still loose. Lochran is able to at least clear, and he carries it out to center ice. And then ahead there, you see it's dumped into the zone by Nardi. Good looking opportunity as Rivera played it on top of the crease. It's going to be a wide open weekend of hockey. You know what? I don't think this is going to be a, a low scoring weekend at all. There's too much talent out here. Yeremko on a backhand left off the Lutz. Let's with it down low, and that one goes off a of body. That was actually the save the goaltender. And now here come numbers the other way, but Carroll breaks it up not once, but here picks it up a second time to take what could have been a three-on-one the other way. Pretty good stick work by Andy Carroll there. That was a big, big play because it was coming in three-on-one almost assuredly if he doesn't get that poke check. We'll take our first break of the evening. Mavericks on top nearing the halfway point of period number one. I'm Minnesota State Mankato graduate Darren Cotter, and I had a big idea. Use my technology skills and passion for entrepreneurship to build a successful internet marketing company. When I was a student in Mankato, I started Inbox Dollars in my dorm room, and today it's grown into a thriving business. Now I can use my expertise to mentor and invest in other Minnesota tech companies, helping them turn their big ideas into fast-growing businesses. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. One of the key cocks for this Mavericks team. Still not in the lineup. I got asked a half a dozen times during yeah. the pregame, what do you know? Nothing. We I know he's nothing. hurt. We know he's hurt. We know he's... Uh, he's back skating. He's back skating. That's all I know. I really think... What's the, the injury? I don't know. For the Mavericks, if they can get through this weekend yes. and then you have the weekend off, now you have two weekends that Michaelis can come back, kind of get back into shape and playing for him one more time before you have to head into the playoffs. That would certainly be the hope. But, again, I, I have no knowledge other than 
He's not playing. Dan, did you know it's autograph night tomorrow night? I'll get a pen ready. I did not. Not for us. For oh. the team. I did not know that till I read it here on the scoreboard. I did not know that. Usually one of the bigger promotions played off a of body down low. Volton's there and enforced wide on the follow-up. That was Craighead. So you're saying you won't sign autographs tomorrow night then? Correct. Okay. I only do it when there's a fee involved. <laughs> okay. Let me know when that happens, by the way. Yeah, don't hold your breath. Smith steals a pass out in front. Nat Provnick teed one up and a big save put on there by Nolan Kent. And Provnick had a good look and a nice play by Smith on the turnover. Yeah, terrible turnover by the Wildcats. A backhanded pass that was taken away by Smith, and that nearly cost him a goal. And you get two, down 2-0 two to this team, you're in trouble. I mean, you got a goaltender with the goals against on the season of 1.36, which might be leading every league everywhere, not just NCAA, in college, in the NHL, at Bantams, Division II. Yeah, yep. there, there may not be a better goals against uh, for anywhere in the country. Geriatrically. Yeah, very much so. Zmolik. Behind the net, Jeremko still with it. Watch by Klee. Out in front. Oh, they tried to get it the first time. Lutz then got it back, was able to put a shot on, and they're going to take the face off out of the zone as Lutz is getting worked over by Sorensen. That was quite the scrum right out in front. Reggie Lutz looking for his second of the night, and he was all over goaltender Kent there. Let's see it here the on face the off is coming outside of the zone. Jeremko with a backhander right out in front. And... Uh, it was a pretty good fight. Boy, he had an opportunity there. Uh, Sorensen just kind of kind of give it the business. Bit, yeah. Yeah. But again, they're going to take a little, the little more there. It's going to be physical. And that's uh, yep. we, we, in the discussion. I know. I think I've read or heard three times. Coach Grant Petoni say, "We physicality. We need to yeah. be physical this weekend." Yeah. Blue. Lifts one into the zone. McNeely. Well, the Mavericks are a great skating team, but they play physical hockey. Uh, they're as physical as anybody. Rivera unable to corral that bouncing puck. Now picked up by Gontus, who just dumps it in. McNeely for Connor Mackey. French for Rivera. Long lead pass. Here comes Sandlin. Puts one in, trying to utilize the defender out in front for a screen. It's Sent wide. Out in front, there's another opportunity as it popped up into the air. Sandlin has it. Plays it back to the point. McNeely threw some traffic into the glove of Kent, who holds it with another save with 10-14 left to go in a 1-0 first period. And again, some of the chippiness starting to develop. And Dan, in all honesty, we could be seeing a preview yeah. of at least maybe a semifinal, if not a conference championship game. So you just wonder... This thing's starting to build. These two teams, is, is noted, they played about two months ago in games up in northern Michigan. It was a split of the series. And, in fact, since that second game of which northern Michigan won, they've only lost one game since that point, and that was to the number one ranked team in the country in Cornell. The Mavericks, though, are on pace to have like 78 shots on goal this game. They've got 14 shots in the first 10 minutes of the first period. You can't sustain that. No, I mean, yeah, I mean I, defensively as a Wildcats, you can't sustain that. They can't allow the Mavericks to get that many shots on goal. If they do, it's going to get out of hand. Fourteen gonna, shots on goal is a is a good period, and the Mavericks have fourteen in the first ten minutes of the first period. That's twenty-eight times three. Don Spooner wins the draw. Played wide of the net. Along the boards, Bouncy Puck. Spooner with another follow-up. There's a rebound, and Dewar sweeps that backhand just wide. Dewar out in front, trying to get a deflection off a of skate. Now shy. Gerads, Spooner. Right now, Dan, the Mavericks win in every race. Yes, they are. Tanner Vesio off the glass, is able to clear. Shy quickly turns it around. Spooner on the near side. Low angle shot, and Kent there with another save. Some more discussion on top of the crease. Officials in to clean it up, and we're still 1-0 Mavericks in Mankato.
it's time to get hooked. For ticket information, call the MSU Athletic Office or see our website. Back here in downtown Mankato, the Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center. We just talked about the success of Northern Michigan past couple of months. Mavericks on a nice push themselves. Yeah, they really are. 9-1-1. and one and one. The, the goals per game is really good. The goals against still really good. The thing about the goals against numbers, if you have a night where you give up two goals, you hurt your goals against. That's, that's ridiculous. Maybe the weak spot is yeah. that power play the percentage. The power play percentage is, is not great. And we asked Coach yeah. Hastings about that. And yeah. He said, you know, it kind of started to coincide when you take guys out of the yeah. lineup like a Sounder, like a Michaelis, it's going to affect that percentage. Well, it's, I mean, clearly that's the, the case. But that's, that's the reality that you have to face also. When somebody's down, somebody else has to pick it up. And, you know, they just haven't been as good in that. The, the key, though, as you mentioned, is get them back. And, you know, the final couple series, get in the uh, conference tournament, have everybody healthy going into the NCAA tournament because there's no question the Mavericks are in the tournament. It's just where do you end up seated, where do you end up going, and do you want to be everybody healthy when you get there? A couple of guys asked, you saw that little bit of discussion that we were going into a break. Dallas Gerads and Tanner Vesci are both in the box for a couple of minutes, so things might open up a little bit in terms of four-on-four -four hockey. And as I said to you, if this was juniors, this game would take all night long. Newhouse. Unsportsmanlike conduct is officially the call against both players. Hukinson left off for Carroll. Carroll through the center circle. Just dump it into a corner where Newhouse picks it up. Long lead pass. This one might be an icing call. A race for the puck, and Hukinson wins that race. And then it's stood up by Craighead. Nobody's going to miss an opportunity to let the other player know that they're there. Whichever team, when they're getting close to the wall, they're going to give them an extra bump every time they get the opportunity to all weekend long. So be ready for that. The Mavericks win tonight. That makes tomorrow night so important for the Wildcats. Oh, it's unbelievable because yeah. they, they, you know, to come out with a split and yeah. not lose ground in the standings. And again, as we talked about in the pregame, Mavericks with the Beavers off, if they can get six points or you know, even five out of the weekend, uh, it's not assured, but boy, they've really opened up a gap that will be hard to close. And of course, the Mavericks end the regular season at Bemidji State. One-timer by Toomey, and he had a really good look. Well, the Wildcats and the Beavers play next weekend at Northern. Follow up. Oh, that one's oh, off the inside wow. of the post by McNeely. Wow. You can't get much closer. There have been rebound opportunities as Toomey puts himself offside. But there's been some stuff, and hence the <laughs> Mavericks have gone after the puck, and that's what has resulted in some of these post whistle discussions. Mavericks have 18 shots on goal with eight and a half to go in the first period of play. Get a look at it here. Oh, man. <laughs> That's on the inner third of the inside of the pipe, Just, even. Yeah, carry him a little yeah. bit there to the to the right on the screen, and it's banging off that and the net. Off the draw, the Mavericks shied. They'll regroup with still 50 seconds left of four-on-four four hockey. Josh French, forced wide, still has it. French for Charlie Girard up on top, Smolik. Josh French a little bit slow behind the play. Out the center ice. There's a hit. Here's a potential. Oh, I thought maybe Girard was going to catch up to it, but Wildcats the other way with Philip Ballou who drives it in. I don't think Grant Ptolemy can be real happy with uh, the possession time that they've had so far. They have not really had much of puck possession over the last eight or nine minutes of this game. Three on three as Molik is still tied up back into play. Shide in the zone, trying to feed one down low for Charlie Girard. Jeremko will step in for the Mavericks. Both teams are back at full strength. Connor Mackey, ooh, tried to feed one down low. Jeremko. That's a trip. And they're going to call Dallas Strat right out of the box, I think, on the trip. And I'm not sure, Dan, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure he tripped him. I would love to see a replay. Well, I don't think he hit him. We're going to see a replay. He went down, 
as he went by, and the referee's hand went up immediately. They better be taking embellishment off as well. I think he got him with a skate. Okay. Well, that's hard to tell. You know, he, he did pull his leg up to try to avoid the hit. But it, I mean, you got to remember, you're seeing it in real time as you're an official. I'm not sure if he hit him or not. Uh, I know yeah, officially what I'm going to yeah. write in the book, and Dallas Durant is yeah. in the box for the third time this period here on a trip at 1229. Hastings is showing a dive. Uh, he just did the, the dive. I, he didn't take a dive. He tried to pull his foot out of the way to keep from tripping on his foot, and he ended up going down because of it. Boy, Durant has spent more time in the box yeah. than uh, on the ice here in the period. Well, it happened, and the official's hand went up immediately. I was sure that uh, they were calling the trip. But after seeing it in slow motion, I'm not positive he even touched him. Wildcats with Sorensen. He just dumps it into the zone. McNeely will poke away. Connor Mackey will sweep it all the way along the boards and out of the zone. That makes the 17 shots on goal by the Mavericks even more impressive because they've had to kill yes. off. Now this is their second penalty kill of the period. And they actually had 18 up on the board a little bit earlier, so they've taken one away for some reason. Well, that's all right. They took the goal away from Toomey <laughs> earlier. So. That's true. Philip Blue. Craighead will sweep it to the near side for Vincent DeMay. Back for Ballou along the boards. Jeremko picks up a loose puck and will send it down the ice. Not a thing of beauty the first minute 10 of this power play for the Wildcats. And the first time they had it, it was basically a back to the point and a pinball. And we're just going to fire it in. And I think they probably had five or six attempts. Craighead will carry it in. Still has it. Of course, to the far side. Lochran. That puck hit either the stanchion or an official. It's onto the stick of the Wildcats. DeMay. Lochran. Out in front, first shot is blocked by Rivera. At least his third block of the contest already. Craighead now blue. Far side DeMay, and that's a glove save for Ryden McCabe. With three seconds left, and Gerads is already up, ready to get back into the play. We talked with Mike Hastings a couple weeks ago about it. We talked about it on the Ma last uh, Maverick Hockey Series uh, two weekends ago about playing defense with your stick. And the Mavericks have done such a good job on this penalty kill of not allowing the passing lanes in the stick and the puck, just not allow the pass to get through center ice at all. So they really haven't had any good looks other than you know very long shots on both their power plays. We just saw Griffin Lockwood, who again leads the country with goal scoring on the year with 20. But what other than that, what has he done? He's also up there in overall yeah. points, obviously. Yeah. But. Now you lead the nation in scoring as a sophomore. You'll take it. Klee is in for the faceoff along with Smith. Still on the circle, actually, kicked around. Gerads is out of the box, and now it's lifted. Played to the near side for Gerads. Has the profit of trailing. Gerads dropped, and now that's going to bring about a penalty as Uremko is going to go at 14.40 on a cross check. Just kind of rode him as he went down. Mavericks with the power play opportunity. And you watch it right here. That's not a real good angle to see what happened there, but there it is. Boston edge and Dallas Gerads goes down and follows with a stick, and that's power play opportunity for the Mavericks. And one area discrepancy statistically between these teams is the power play for the Mavericks, fifth in the country at 26 and a half. And again, that unfortunately is come down in recent weeks but on the other side the penalty kill for northern michigan only 35th in the country as they've given up uh, 25 goals and 127 opportunities so their kill percentage is actually a little over 80 percent 
Low angle shot down low. They're trying to feed Van Oshaw. The Mavericks back in the win 5-2 earlier in the season in Northern Michigan. It was a power play night for the Mavericks. They went three for five. Gerard Van Oshaw with a quick shot. Far side for Lutz. Flip back to the point. Scheid. Yeremko. We've been through some traffic and then lost puck possession and sent all the way down. Second chance for a clear for the Wildcats. They get that one. The previous one held in at the blue line, and we've seen the Mavericks over the years. If you don't get that initial clear, you're in trouble. Shied. Back for Napravnik. As it poked off his stick as he was entering the zone. Toomey on the far side, and the Mavericks will regroup. In fact, they're going to bring it all the way back deep into the zone. Slattery is out there looking things over for Wildcats, and now Connor Mackey will carry into the zone behind the net. Still on his stick up on top for Parker Toomey. Napravnik. Smith back for Napravnik as the Mavericks now will get set up. Mackey. Napravnik down low. On front. Oh, and a Toomey. It was a perfect play, except the post was there. Second post the Mavericks have hit in the period. Dallas Gerads looked up, lost puck possession, still down low here near side. Down low, there's a chance, Smith. Oh, and Kent, <laughs> what a save by Kent. Dubrovnik for Toomey, Connor Mackey. Wildcats back at full strength. Dubrovnik has that shot blocked and right out of the box. Remco will clear Mavericks. Holy buckets. The passing play with the shot out on yeah. top of the crease was awesome, and just, again, the pipe, unfortunately. Two opportunities. I thought that it had gone off Kent's mask uh, originally, but. You might be right. It, it, incredible play either way. And then uh, the next uh, next play was an, an unbelievable save. So the Mavericks had two really good chances to make it 2-0. Walker Doerr, low angle shot. That's armed to side. McNeely, Rivera. Rivera still with it behind the net. We'll sweep it out in front, and that one is stuffed by Newhouse. Doer tapped out of there. Brandon Schultz, and now we're going to get a penalty against the Mavericks, and that's a retaliation penalty. Played to the side of the net. Bouncing puck still down low. Dryden McKay gloves it, and now it's going to be Rivera, I think, going to the box. And we will take a break. Mavericks with a flurry of action, but still just the one nothing lead. Don Westfall and Dan McCarger in what has been an extremely entertaining first period of play here. We thought it might be at a playoff level. <laughs> it's kind of been there, maybe been a little more physical than you might expect at a playoff game. And the Mavericks back on a penalty kill for the third time in the period with Rivera in the box. Craighead down low. Lochran tries the low angle shot, and they're going to count that as a goal. Yep. That was deep along the red line, so yes, he didn't have was. much room to work with. And the Mavericks simply going to the box too many times in the yeah, first period. Yeah, and that's period. the thing Mike Hastings said. Uh, he said, we need to leave the box empty, and the Mavericks did not do it. Three times in the first period is way too many. That's that's a game full of uh, penalties. One of them may or may not have been an actual penalty, but you see the shot here. Yeah, that was definitely in. 17. 48, the time of the goal. Lochran, I think, is going to get it. Is, uh, They're going to look right now and see, but uh, this puck goes definitely goes into the net. All of a sudden, the Maverick fans with the gas thinking maybe this will get waved off, but Dan Well, here, I don't see it. I, I mean, they, the replay showed the puck clearly goes in the net. Now, the net came off, but I think the puck was in before the net came off. That angle doesn't, you'll see another angle from the top where you can see the puck clearly goes in. Hmm. Is Interesting. It off, is it off before? I don't know. Because I tell you what, yeah. it, 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 it opened up. It's the, yeah, they're going to count. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looked yeah. like it opened up the angle a little bit more, but. I think they were checking to see did the puck go in the net or not, and it, uh, it clearly went in. I would love to see so, it one more time a little slower. I, I don't know if we can slow it down enough to tell um, if the puck goes in. Not this yeah, angle. Yeah, this angle won't tell you anything. 
The is the over and slow it down if he may. Uh, Not too hard to know. Yeah, that might be one uh, of those that, you know, if they would have said no goal, they probably wouldn't have been able yeah. to overturn it either. Set wide. So we're 1-1 here late in the first. Well, the danger is that the Mavericks have taken three penalties in the first period. Spooner carries. Low angle. Oh. Score! Oh, my goodness. That's a snipe. Nolan Kent must have lost his angle a little bit there. He left the far side open. And Jared Spooner put it away. That's not a goal you want to give up if you're a Wildcat fan late in the period after you just get it tied up. Spooner is seven in the year, and I totally agree. You can't just no. score a goal like the Wildcats did and then give this one back the other way. Now, they want to check and see if he's offside or not. And I don't know if that's the case or not, but, yeah, Nolan Kent got beat there and shouldn't have. If it stands, but, it goes up at 18-16. Now, I didn't, I didn't see if they might have been offside or not, but they're going to take a look at it here. But they were immediately calling for an offside. Mike Hastings getting an explanation of what the delay is about. So the officials fans, climbing fans in. Fans not happy, but uh, the puck clearly goes in the net. The question is, are they offsides or not? And I think been the looks put. Like, right, it looks okay. It's on the far side right next to their bench, and I think uh, the Mavericks are okay. Yeah, this might be a little wider angle. Yeah. Might. So it's going to be on the other side. Ooh. Now the question yeah. is, uh, we can't see, does he have his right skate up or not? If his skate is down, it's okay. If his, if his, lef his left leg is across the line, his right leg has to be down. If it's up, he's off sides. And I, I, from that angle, we couldn't see it enough. Now the referees are able to slow it down and really take a look at it and see does he have his right skate up off of the ice or not. Uh, we need to kind of get it slow as well. Looks like it's Van Osha up there. Yeah, you yeah can, I mean, we, we, it, we can't see it. Now they have a better shot from down there that they're looking at on the on the blue line that'll be able to tell you a little bit more if that right foot is up or not. I'm going to be honest with you. It might be another situation like we just yeah. had. The, there's not from enough evidence we, there what, to overrule it. If they're using our camera on that shot, no, you can't tell. Um, it looks as though his foot might be coming up, but we certainly can't tell. But uh, they've got a little better shot there, I think, that they're looking at. And if they're looking at the same angle we are, they will say that this is a good goal. So do I put it down in ink or? <laughs> put it in pencil and, <laughs> and just wait a second here. I, I don't see that we've got an angle from what we've seen that you can tell whether his right foot is up or not. And they're really trying to look at it very closely, freezing it to see if his right skate is still on the ice or not. Well, we're going to get a ruling here pretty quickly. Yep. Now they're telling the public address announcer something that I'm concerned. Oh, no, they're going to put the right hand down. Yep. Well, we couldn't see. So uh, that will force uh, Northern Michigan to They'll take their time out. Yep. It's very likely that his right foot comes up, but we can't see it. So it's going to go in as the seventh goal of the year for Spooner again, 18-16. And I, I totally agree with your assessment, Dan. Yeah. You get a really big goal on a power play yeah. down here, and then to give up a goal like that back the other way. That. Yeah, that's just this late in the period is is a tough a one to take. That's just an absolute killer. Mavericks with McNeely trying to dump it in, and now Connor Mackey steps in. Gontus into the corner. Connor Mackey. Gontus again trying to sweep it out in front. Doer getting the single assist on the play. Gontus steps in, and he stood up by Connor Mackey. Gontus. Plays it down low, and it's kicked aside by McKay. McNeely will get there. Played over for Connor Mackey. The Provnik forces it along the boards. Smith for Toomey. Now in the Provnik, and that's offside. And we're down to a minute remaining here in the first. So Lutz and Spooner scoring for the Mavericks on either side of a goal by Lochran. Mavericks have 18 shots on goal. They had 18 shots on goal about seven minutes ago, and they've scored a goal in the interim. 
but uh, that, that quick pace that had started the first 10 minutes has slowed down on shots on goal, but otherwise this has been up and down the ice, and it's been uh, every much, every, pretty much everything that you would want. Over on the far side, dumped out by Van Union. Zmolik. Up on top of the slot, played in on that, and Dryden McKay will just hold on for a faceoff. Now, Dryden McKay has seen 13 shots in the first period. Almost half the games this year, Don, he's seen about that many in a game. So he's going to get his work uh, in this evening, no question. Well, he can rest next weekend. Yes, he can. Too much yet to be decided here as the Mavericks trying to widen their lead in the chase for the regular season championship. We'll, uh, before the night's over, bring up our standings a few more times to let you know everybody's at. And, of course, as we start moving throughout the contest, we'll bring you scores from around the WCHA. Mavericks with the face-off win. French carried all the way in. Of course, past Sandler at the point. Now it's the Wildcats. Schultz with the shot. That's off the shoulder. Sandlin has it. Kick back for Zmolik. Swept along the boards. Rivera. Philip Ballou takes a hit there from Sandlin. Darian Craighead dumped on the far side with Rivera. And here come numbers for the Mavericks. Three on one. Sandlin looks up, takes a quick shot. Thought he might have been running out of time and the initial save by Kent. Now we're going to get some discussion with three and a half seconds left and the hand's already up. So someone's going to the box. And I got a feeling the Mavericks are going to go. Nolan Kent made the save and everybody was looking for a rebound. The rebound just never came and he was kind of wondering where the puck was as well. Slashing's the call. And they're going to bring over Connor Mackey it looks like. Fourth penalty on the Mavericks in the first period. Not something that Mike Hastings is going to be happy with as they head into the locker room. 1956, one for three so far in the contest. The Wildcats with the man advantage. Most of it is going to carry over into the second period. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I think you just brought up the first, probably the fourth, and certainly the last discussion point yeah. that Hastings is going to make is you, 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 we're flirting with disaster by putting a team with this much offense back on the ice with an extra attacker. There's a little less time. You'd think the Wildcats would even pull the goalie, but there's three and a half seconds. That's enough time to get a face off and a puck all the way down the ice, so you can't really do it. Nardi's out for the draw. He leads the country in face-off wins with a 378 coming into the game. But the Mavericks, nice job by Smith, who gets the all-important win on the draw. And this, that penalty, as Dan mentioned, will carry over with 157 left to go in the uh, penalty by Connor Mackey. We are at the end of the first period of play again for the Mavericks. 2-1 lead with Lutzen Spooner scoring. Lochran scoring a power play tally between those two. And uh, 20 minutes are in the books. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the first intermission from downtown Mankato on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Stick to what we know best. I'm Larissa Schulich, a Minnesota State Mankato student, and I have a big idea. 
I want to be among the few women who have a cockpit view of the world. My dad has his pilot's license. He inspired me to put in the hard work necessary to fly commercial planes. Now, with the guidance of my professors and thousands of hours of expert training, my big idea is becoming a reality, one flight at a time. Big ideas, real world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. It's time to get hooked. For ticket information, call the MSU Athletic Office or see our website. Downtown Mankato, where the score is now 2-1. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. I'm Marissa Voss, and I'm joined by senior forward number six, Parker Toomey. Parker, Coach Hasting talks about needing to be more assertive and taking the lead early in the first. How important is it to get that first goal of the night? Uh, yeah, it was huge, uh, obviously, uh, with that Jeremko line around Lutz and, and Charlie. Um, you know, got the puck in deep right away. I thought they made a lot of noise. Uh, we're moving the puck well, shot on net, rebound, and then uh, I think Charlie just threw it back out out front, and Lutz was able to put it away. Um, yeah, it's always huge to have a good start like that. Now we have to make sure we uh, stay out of the box and uh, play some five-on-five -five hockey. So that was a solid PK effort in the last period. How essential is it to keep these Wildcats to the perimeter? Uh, yeah, it's huge. I mean, obviously, we want to keep them off the power play, first of all. But, um, yeah, I like the way we're killing right now. Um, Nick Rivera with a couple big blocks there. And, uh, yeah, everybody just really sacrificing to keep that puck out of the net. Thanks, Parker. Good luck in the second. Thank Thanks. Coming back from break, one of our own, Don Westfall, sits down with head coach Mike Hasing to discuss tonight's game. Stay tuned, guys. Biology professors at Minnesota State Mankato had a big idea. Immerse first-year students in hands-on scientific research. I'm already researching the brain and how it controls behavior. I'm studying how cancer starts so we can figure out how to stop it. Our RISE Bio Scholarship Program, supported by the National Science Foundation, gives students unique access to real-world research, preparing future leaders in science. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. I'm Minnesota State Mankato graduate Darren Cotter, and I had a big idea. Use my technology skills and passion for entrepreneurship to build a successful internet marketing company. When I was a student in Mankato, I started Inbox Dollars in my dorm room, and today it's grown into a thriving business. Now I can use my expertise to mentor and invest in other Minnesota tech companies, helping them turn their big ideas into fast-growing businesses. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. Time to get hooked. For ticket information, call the MSU Athletic Office or see our website. Mankato, we'll spend a few moments right now with Minnesota State head coach Mike Hastings. And coach, just a little bit of a talk uh, last weekend. Uh, you know, I realize that statistically you only pulled two points out of a game, but boy, you talk about a game where you're, it's a gut check, you're texting your, your mox, moxie, you're relying on one another. That game Saturday night, uh, obviously the finish is one that really is something to build upon in terms of the last month of the regular season coming up. Oh, it is, and you know what? You start the game, you want all three. Mm -hmm. You try to be greedy, especially when you're on the road and you've got the first one. And, you know, as that game continued to go on, we did some things that uh, weren't putting us in a great position. And we, one, we started out playing from behind. Uh, we were down by two. And then sandwiched after those two goals, we had back-to-back -back five minute majors, about a minute apart. Uh, with some guys that were out of the lineup from the night before and guys that we left back here. So we'd put ourselves in a pretty difficult position, but I, th this group has done a pretty good job at being resilient when they're faced with adversity, and they did a phenomenal job over the last two, two and a half minutes, gave us some good looks. Uh, 
thank goodness Parker Toomey did what he usually does at that time, scores us a goal to get us within one, and then the group went back together and uh, broke us out of our end after we lost a face-off in the neutral zone, got us back in possession, and uh, then Ian Scheid finished his work. So the finish was exciting, but obviously you don't want to go to the well too often on those. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm follically challenged enough. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need any more of that. A little bit of an injury update uh, since you might have been in the building the last time. Obviously some big guys still out. I know you get Jeremko back this weekend, but where, where do things stand injury-wise? Oh, we're getting there. You know, uh, Jake, I mean, yeah, we're trying to have a little foresight here for what's down the road and make sure, make sure that we're doing the things that we need to be doing. We're giving some great valuable experience to guys right now that might not have had that if these guys would have continued to be in the lineup and in our sport it's a collision sport it's a contact sport so you're going to lose guys and so our guys that have come in have done a really good job up until this point but as you mentioned getting Jake Uremko back uh, Julian Napravnik will be in uh, he had bummed up a little bit on Saturday but uh, has had a great week uh, Josh French, who didn't play on Saturday, is completely green-lighted. So, you know, it, it, it helps us out down the middle, especially when you look at Jake Uramko, who's one of your top six forwards, and Josh French, who has played up and down our lineup this entire year and done such a phenomenal job killing penalties and uh, doing a lot of big things for us as far as D-zone face-offs, just responsibility that you want out of your seniors. So having those guys back in the lineup helps our depth. All right, let's focus in on the weekend coming up here. And obviously, in the standings, this is a big weekend. You guys right now with the five-point lead, you can put a gap in there because Bemidji State is off. And then on the flip side for Northern Michigan, they obviously want to keep pace, benefiting <clears throat> from the two games that they had at hand. So going into their series next week with Bemidji State, some big points on the ice. But the distance that you guys could create right now with only uh, two weeks left to play is a big one. It is. It's you know, a couple things. One, we want to get back to defending our home ice. Uh, last time we were in here, it didn't go the way that we wanted it to go. And we've been playing with a little bit of fire, and it, it burnt us a little bit on Saturday, but burnt us the Saturday before here in our own building. And playing from behind has been something that we've fallen into a little bit of a trap. So we've got to try and take advantage of us playing in our own building, playing in front of our own fans, and, and try to get off to some better starts. And then when you talk about the importance of points, you know, this is the regular season. You're going to have some playoffs down the road where you can end up seeing these guys. We talk about trying to win every series that we have, and that means legal or uh, season-long series. And right now, this series sits at one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And so very important start here for Friday night for us to get off to a good start. Is this series as easy as your top-ranked defense against their offense? No, I don't think so. I, I, I think you you look at a couple of things. You look at Lorhan, who's got 20 goals. They're they're you know Craig had just had a hat trick in his last game. Uh, they're, they're starting to have you know Vincent Demace had a, a coming out party as a sophomore, and and his impact on their their group. And then I think something that's a little unheralded is their their blue line. You know, and, and everybody talks about Boylo, potential All-American, guy that's been an all-league pick up until all the way up to a senior year here. Um, but their freshmen have come in and done a very good job. So uh, with that, combine that with their goaltending, I think that they're good offensively. I think they're good defensively. You look at their special teams, their power play is a threat every time you play them. And so uh, we'll have our hands full, but it's an opportunity for us to grow also. So we're looking forward to the challenge. You mentioned every category except their penalty kill, which you stung them on. That was a big, you got three goals in the win up there at Northern Michigan. And they've, they had a, they shut the other team out last weekend, but they've struggled on that one. That would be one area. And I know you guys, it's an area you've worked on. You've only got two power play goals in your last 15 attempts. It's a place that we've struggled. When you talk about the, the positions that the guys have vacated that have been out of the lineup, and you even look last weekend with Napravnik going out, French on the penalty kill, uh, you know, when, when we start talking about guys before that, and Mark Michaelis, and uh, guys that are in skill positions, Jake Uremko, they were guys that we ran our power play through. And so once you remove them, you need some different guys to get more puck touches and make good decisions. And so with Jake being injected back into our lineup, I thought our power play went well this week we'll see how it goes this weekend it's it's been a little bit of a sore spot for us here over the last couple of weeks so hopefully we can get that in line all right so your areas of focus to success this weekend are good first start 
you know, and, and I know that you and I talk about this every time we sit down, but for us to get the people in the building into the game, for us to feel uh, uh, we can play with the lead, uh, because we haven't done a lot of that as of late. And so I think our first start, winning that special team battle, uh, making sure, you know, can we keep that line? Can we keep Lauren's line off? the score sheet because if you do that I think you're asking for some other guys to step up and uh, most guys that score a lot of points they're not real happy when they don't so uh, I think that's a piece for us and then we're gonna have to win the battle between the posts so uh, a lot of things that we've talked about but again an opportunity for us to grow tonight and we look forward to the challenge all right Minnesota State head coach Mike Hastings here on the Maverick Hockey Weekend I'm Minnesota State Mankato graduate Darren Cotter, and I had a big idea. Use my technology skills and passion for entrepreneurship to build a successful internet marketing company. When I was a student in Mankato, I started Inbox Dollars in my dorm room, and today it's grown into a thriving business. Now I can use my expertise to mentor and invest in other Minnesota tech companies, helping them turn their big ideas into fast-growing businesses. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. Time to get hooked. For ticket information, call the MSU Athletic Office or see our website. Hey, Maverick fans, I'm Marissa Voss, and I'm joined by Larry Wild with Anthony Ford Pond Hockey Classic. So the Pond Hockey Classic is this weekend, and where is this at, and what is this all about? How did this get started? Well, the event uh, is uh, in the beautiful Lower North Mankato at Spring Lake Park. We've been there five years. This is the 12th year of our Anthony Ford Pond Hockey Classic. Uh, just to give folks a little uh, backstory here, Anthony was a young man who was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia at age eight, and uh, he passed away in uh, 2006 at the age of nine. But in his short life, he impacted many, many people, became a very, very good friends of the Maverick hockey players. Uh, he was almost like a little brother to them. So it, to honor his memory and his passion for hockey, we decided to create the Anthony Ford Pond Hockey Classic and uh, raise money for uh, a variety of different uh, charities, um, therapeutic advances in childhood leukemia, um, uh, youth hockey scholarships in the area as well as uh, ice needs in the area so uh, it's just been a great event so it sounds like such a great event and you know I hope that everyone gets to come out this but where can people come out for this I know it's a little late to sign up but how can people get out to this event? Well, just come on out to Spring Lake Park. Uh, the, the weather forecast is 28 degrees and overcast, which should make for some perfect ice. we got the rinks set up. Uh, just stop on out and enjoy the day. I know I love pond hockey. I know Minnesotans love pond hockey, and I will be there this weekend helping out. So I hope to see all of you guys there for this event. It's going to be a great one. Come on out. <laughs> We're back here in downtown Mankato, the Mayo yeah, so Clinic Health System that. Event Center. You see our score after one period of play. Mavericks on top by a margin of 2-1. to one. Don Westfall along with Dan McCarger. Bringing you the first in our two-game series here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Dan, uh, do you have some highlights for us? It was an eventful first period to say the least. The Mavericks get on the board first. Reggie Lutz is 10th of the season from Charlie Gerard and Edwinson Hookins Edwin Hookinson even strength at 2 one then Lof uh, Griffin Lofgren is 21st of the season. That leads the nation from Joseph Nardi and Darian Craighead at 17.48, makes it 1-1. But the Mavericks come back just uh, 28 seconds later. S Jared Spooner, his seventh of the season from Walker Dewar at 18.16, and the Mavericks take a 2-1 lead into the first intermission. You see shots on goal there, 19-14 attempted, 35-24. Penalty minutes and faceoffs won. Northern Michigan leading the faceoff battle, and Mavericks taking four penalties in the first period, something Mike Hastings will not be happy about. Bowling Green leans uh, Anchorage in the third, 4-3. Lake State up on Tech tonight, 6-3 in the third. Alabama Huntsville, three, Alaska, one. Omaha and UMD tied at one in the second. Michigan State and uh, the Gophers at it. The Gophers have now scored to take a 2-1 lead in the second. And Penn State and Ohio State tied at two in the third. Big 10 race is very tight. WCHA race could be very, very tight, Don, after tonight. Minnesota State. With 56 points, Bemidji 5 back there idle this weekend. Northern Michigan with a win tonight and a win tomorrow night. 
could crawl within six points of first place with two games in hand. So yeah. this could be a very tight race where the Mavericks could bust it wide open. Yeah, Mavericks, if they can find a way to get a sweep out of this yeah. weekend, again, a lot of work yet to be done. But you put them up at 62 points. for Midji is idle with 51, and all of a sudden, yeah. Mavericks. North, Northern uh, Michigan is gone, yep. and only the Beavers would be left. And the Mavericks can pretty much lock it up in two weeks when they're home against Alabama Huntsville right. after a week off. So, so lo- these games are incredibly important for the conference standings. Yep. Very much so. Mavericks, we know at this point, will be home for the first round of the playoffs. So not only, obviously, have we locked up the spot, but when the WCHA playoffs open for at least the first weekend right now, they would be home. And We're uh, hoping for three straight weekends yeah. of hockey here in Mankato with a championship one game uh, final on uh, about a month from now. I think potentially the Mavericks this weekend, obviously, mathematically can then lock up both first and second right. round home series. So. A lot of shifting yet to go. The only thing we haven't talked about yet, Dan, is pairwise. And as you mentioned earlier, pairwise is very important. But the Mavericks, no matter what, they're in the national tournament. If the Mavericks point. lost the rest of their games and lost uh, in the first round of the WCHA tournament, they would still make the tournament. They would not fall that far in the pairwise. They've just uh, banked too much equity on the season so far. But uh, we don't even want to think about that. You want to go into the tournament very strong, and there's every reason to believe the Mavericks are going to do that. Yeah, the Mavericks killing off that penalty that... Uh Connor Mackey took right at the end of the first period of play. So fourth opportunity for the Wildcats, and they now finally have it in the zone. Lochran, DeMay to the far side for Craighead. Down low, it got redirected, slowly trickled in on net, and Dryden McKay can easily cover it up. That's the type of deflection that that play deserved. It was passing slow around the perimeter. The slot came off show, or the shot came off slow. And the deflection just dribbled to the goaltender, and that's exactly what should have happened with that. It seemed as though they're playing about three-quarter speed here as we got started here in the second period of play. No way they could keep up the frantic pace of the first ten minutes, that's for sure. Tell you what, talking to some fans, though, in the intermission, they're loving it. It's uh, entertaining, uh, probably a little bit too loose. Boy, there would have been an opportunity for DeMay if he could have cleanly handled that pass from Craig at... To the point, far side, Craighead out in front. Played back for DeMay, and he overskates the puck. Here comes Ballou with the bouncing puck, and again, that one wow. might have been going in, and Carroll got a stick in to help out with that save. DeMay, Ballou, Craighead, he's tied up by Lutz. Wildcats, I'm sure, would have loved to have seen some type of penalty on that, but it's just tapped down the ice by Hookinson. With now 25 seconds left, so time for one last rush. There have not been three clean passes, though, and that's what coaches will tell you. To get a good look on the power play, you really need three clean passes, tape to tape, and there have been two, but the third one just hasn't been able to finish. Swept along the boards. It gets stuck in the skates of the official, unfortunately, as there would have been an easy clear. Save made by McKay off that shot from Newhouse. Connor Mackey is back. On the ice, comes out to pick up the puck, and he'll just tap it down to center ice as Sorensen is there. So one for four officially, the Wildcats, as they have it back in the zone. Shide. Mackey will just tap it out. Now picked up by Napravnik. Mavericks need to get it deep, but here comes French on a rush. French down low, looks for Napravnik, and he fanned on the opportunity. Toomey plays it into an open corner as the Mavericks are actually in the midst of a line change. Toomey for Smith, but that play too far behind him, and Raider brings it out. Many times after a penalty you're looking for, did someone generate some uh, some energy out of the penalty, uh, either on the kill or on the power play? And it looks like the Mavericks uh, seem to have got their legs going right away once they got uh, the penalty killed. And the Provnik, Smith, he just plays it to an open corner. Connor Mackey behind the net, he stood up. Played out to center ice off a of skate, and here comes Slattery along with Klee. Sent wide of the net. Parker Toomey trying to force it along the boards. Slattery out in front trying to find a line mate. That would have been DeMay on the play. Slattery again in the corner. Lowen tied up by Smith. Toomey picks it up for the Mavericks, sidesteps the check, but it's still in the zone for the Wildcats and now played out. McNeely, Connor Mackey, Napravnik, 
tapped in, but easily cleared out. Lochran flips it ahead, intended for Gontus, and flipped back out by the Mavericks. And Union has it broken up. Here comes Van Oshaw, but it's played off his stick nicely by Philip Blue, one of the better defensemen in the country, certainly within the WCHA. Played all the way down. It'll be a race for the puck, and Carroll's going to get there. I thought there might have been icing on the play, but it had been waved off. Duel flips it ahead for Spooner, who carries. Spooner behind the net. Up on top for Scheid. Ooh, they had on the far side. Doer was wide open. Doer. There comes Spooner, and he fans on the attempt as the pass a little bit too deep into his skates, and they'll come all the way back. Mavericks will have to pick it up with Scheid. A couple of good looks that the Mavericks just couldn't connect on. Jeremko on his backhand, sweeps out front. Oh, bouncing puck goes wide, still down low in the crease. Jeremko on his backhand. Jeremko got <laughs> tackled. Gerard plays one wide of the net. McNeely, Lutz trying to play it over to Gerard, but that one had gone, and this will be an icing call the other way. McNeely comes back to play it, and we'll go the other way into the Maverick offensive zone. You know, whatever happens this weekend, next weekend series, Beavers, Wildcats should be outstanding, and then the final weekend, the Mavericks and the Beavers could very well be for the conference title, and that is just going to be crazy up in Bemidji. Be one worth going to. I'm going to be in Fort Myers. I'm, I'm sorry. Brutal duty. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Smith? As long as you think of me. Yeah, I will. Okay. I appreciate that. Down low. Here comes Smith. One, oh, and it's forced just wide. And I don't know if Kent got a piece of that or Smith just didn't have enough real estate to work with. Kent was deep in his net, too, and there's a penalty coming yeah, up. Play up around the head on the holding call, and the Mavericks will come back with their second power play of the night. I'm Minnesota State Mankato graduate Darren Cotter, and I had a big idea. Use my technology skills and passion for entrepreneurship to build a successful internet marketing company. When I was a student in Mankato, I started Inbox Dollars in my dorm room, and today it's grown into a thriving business. Now I can use my expertise to mentor and invest in other Minnesota tech companies, helping them turn their big ideas into fast-growing businesses. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. Dan McCarger was just talking about this big series to close out the regular season when the Mavericks travel north to take on Bemidji State. Split early in the year. Actually, that split just a couple of weeks ago. Maverick fans hoping it's already done before that ever gets to that. It may or may not be. There's, there's just too much to happen between now and then, but Mavericks at Beavers to decide the WCHA would be a lot of fun. These two teams go way the heck back down. Mavericks with their off week next week, the one that Bemidji is enjoying right now, and then as we said, the Mavericks before they get to that series against Bemidji State is there you look at the holding call played up high along the head to me. Mavericks will be hosting Alabama Huntsville and it's our next games here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend two weeks from right now. Big two minutes for the Mavericks here. They can put a big hurt on the Wildcats with a goal here. Lutz will tee up a blast and that goes right into the belly of Kent. Kent saw that one all the way. Played for Spruce Grove in the AJHL. He got a look at it and was able to wrap his body around it. Face off to his left with still a minute 54 to go on the man advantage. Kent, the uh, reigning goaltender of the month for the WCHA with uh, 217 saves in the month of January. He actually was honorable mention for his play last week against Ferris State. Good on 51 of 55 shots in the sweep. Jeremko, that one hit a stick and it'll go up into the netting. Pretty good crowd here tonight, Don. Saturday nights have always been better, and we're expecting a full house tomorrow night. For the rematch, hour earlier tomorrow night. Indeed. The women will be playing in the afternoon, hosting defending national champion Wisconsin. Mavericks uh, losing the day earlier to the Badgers by a margin of 5-1. to one.
Top two teams in the nation in women's hockey are in the WCHA. You guys keep bringing that up to your uh, guests on Tuesdays. Yes. Shide with a burst of speed down low. Follow up, and the net is off already. Boy, Shied with his first goal of the season. <laughs> Last week, actually picked up the goal then in three-on-three -three play in that overtime comeback Saturday night to give the Mavericks two of the three points. This puck might have ended up in the net somewhere along the way, but the net was definitely off when it did. Yeah. There's no question on this one. It, it definitely crossed the goal line. It never actually ended up in the net. True enough. With that play and the results of that, they're going to take the face off outside the zone. Smith and Klee will step in. Still 124 left, as you can see, in the power play opportunity for the Mavericks. Their second of the night. Neither goal in the first were power play tallies. And the goals by Spooner and Lutz. Played down low, and Vescio is there. Slattery picks it up. Played ahead for Klee. Connor Mackey will have to return behind his own net to pick things up. Parker Toomey on the near side for Smith. Toomey gets a return feed and will carry in. Flip down low for Napravnik. Toomey, Napravnik down low. Smith tries to jam it in, but in trying to bring it to the forehand side, he actually lost the puck. Smith, Napravnik, Toomey. Smith again behind the goal line. Brings it out with 33 seconds left in the power play. Smith, one-timer there is armed aside by Napravnik. He'll get the uh, rebound that was fed by Smith. Drads with the one-timer in that one. You heard the blocker save, and it's dumped all the way down the ice. Nolan Kent followed that puck perfectly from right to left and was able to make the save. You could hear the big pad, as you mentioned, but... Mavericks with a pretty good look, but Nolan Kent was all over that one. Lutz will get it into the zone as the Mavericks still on the power play. Smolik weaving through some traffic down low, trying to feed the slot. No one's there, and Fulton's out of the box, but the Mavericks hold the zone. Smolik on the near side, played down low and off a skate. Long rebound that McNeely is able to get to first. Lutz. Ahead for Charlie Gerard. Has three players on him. Jeremko pulls it out. Jeremko on his backhand up on top for McNeely. Feather down, redirected by Lutz, but Kent makes that save and it's dumped out. Andre Gantus trying to take it into the corner. Poked away from him. Rivera is able to clear for the Mavericks. Sorensen is back. Mavericks with 27 shots on goal now. We're not even at the midway point of this game yet. On pace for over 50 against the 15th ranked team in the nation. McNeely off the boards. Shift ahead. Here comes Rivera. Rink wide to pass too far for Gerard. They'll dump it all the way in. Craig had to win that race to the puck. Played back for Reedman, but that pass misfires. And Northern Michigan has to clear the zone in the midst of some line changes on either side. Andy Carroll. Dumped into the corner. Mavericks will now complete that line change. Lead pass ahead for Slattery who dumps it in and the return on completion of the line is now made by Northern Michigan with the bouncing puck. Shy Sandlin able to dump it out and clear. Gerard and Blue there. Long lead pass. Spooner and Gerard's doing a nice job to hold the zone for the Mavericks, but it's now picked up. Your Remco. Shy will come back to play it. Pretty wide open right now, Dan, end to end. And I think that favors the Mavericks always. Walker Dewar down low, out in front. Shy somehow. I'd love to see the replay of that, of how that one was missed because Dewar and Shy. Looked like they had a for sure two-on-one goal coming up. And once again, we have the net get knocked not just slightly off, but completely off its moorings. 
Yeah, yeah we, we just talked about the Mavericks are so fast. They, they win so many races with the puck here, and you get a look at it here as Dewar. I think it was just deflected just a hair. And, and Scheid might have been tied up from yep. behind defensively never got a stick on the puck. Good 29 looking. shots on goal for the Mavericks. They're on pace for 58 shots in the game tonight. You're pretty good with that that's math inc- stuff. That's incredible. I mean, that's a huge amount of shots, and you're playing a very good hockey team. They're on pace for 32. Your Remco. Zmolik will come back. Dubrovnik will carry it into the zone. Now we get a penalty. They're going to call a hooking call, and I think it's going to be a Maverick power play coming out of this break. It's time to get hooked. For ticket information, call the MSU Athletic Office or see our website. Taking a look at Dave Smith, our veteran of the game, and the reason we're coming back and showing Mr. Smith is he actually was on the first ever varsity hockey team here for at then what was Minnesota State College back in 1969. It played a couple years of club hockey, has a distinguished record of service for the United States, 21 years in the service, including uh, being awarded the Legion of Merit for exceptional and meritorious service to the country, made numerous uh, missions into some unfriendly territory, whether it was uh, over in a little bit of time in Saudi Arabia, spent some time working for General Wesley Clark. This guy's got a nice... uh, Nice record and a nice to honor, of course. We do that every night here in downtown Mankato. And again, one of the highlights of the night every time that that is that it happens. I have to thank uh, former coach Don Bros. And uh, Coach Bros actually sent me the information about Dave Smith. And it's not often that we can uh, honor a veteran of the game who actually wore the Maverick jersey. Pretty cool opportunity. Would not have been a Maverick, though, then. Shy, Uremko. Mavericks on the power play as Blue is in the box on the hooking call. So the Mavericks, the third, third power play of the night. That one is played out of play. Hopefully everyone's okay as it went up and over the Maverick bench. You, you pull the puck back into your zone to kind of try to kill some time, then you turn it over and nearly give up a scoring chance. That would be a, a bad thing to happen to you. Officials discussing right now where the faceoff should come. They're saying it's deflected. They're going to say it was deflected by the Mavericks, which would allow a uh, change of personnel on the ice for Northern Michigan. I thought it did, but Grant uh, Patoni not happy. No, he's not happy with that one. I thought the indication was again it had been tipped out. I mean, the, the officials. Did the yeah. uh, hand showing it sliding off the, uh, the other hand? So it certainly seemed like they were calling for a deflection. The Profnik. And we're going to get an interference call right out of the faceoff. Or, yep. The yep. That's invariably the call after the puck drop. If there's a whistle within the first two or three seconds, it's, it's an interference. Smith is going to go, and there you see a little bit of stunned look by Coach Hastings. Don't know if we'll be able to pick it up. But again, it came right off the faceoff, Dan. Wow. That was I'm, I'm it. telling you what, wow, if, that was it. That's if, if they're going to call that, then they better be really busy with the whistles Man, the rest was, of the night. That was interesting. That was, uh, that was as patty cake of a, as a call as I remember in who knows how long. That's, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Wow. I'm not even sure by the letter of the law that that's right. But to call that interference. Get busy with the whistles, guys. <laughs> wow. Start calling it all. Smith that's, is gone. That's that's as, as weak a penalty as we've seen this year. So we're four on four, and it'll become a uh, the fifth power play. 
not much of a time discrepancy on the board. Roughly, it's going to be about a 40-second power play opportunity. But again, we're four on four for another minute ten. McNeely, now Connor Mackey in the slot. Quick shot, and again, right into the body of Kent. As Mackey and Van Unen were tied up on the play, and the officials quickly in to break that up. NCAA hockey is the only reason that this is not going to be a fight fest this weekend. We're not done yet. No, I know, but I mean, this is, this is already there would have been some fights if this was at a different level. I'm fine with it not being. I'm just telling you that this, people would have dropped the gloves already if this was the NHL or if this was juniors. I don't think there's any question about it. And it's just going to keep ramping up as this game gets further along. Connor Mackey up on top, McNeely. Charlie Girard takes the one hit but still holds. Mackey again. Down for Girard again. We're four on four right now. Connor Mackey drop pass intended for Jeremko. Off a skate out in front. Connor, or Girard that was with the shot. And Kent had a little bit of a save on the shoulder there. Balancing puck that no one's finally able to possess. It's going to be Sorensen for the Wildcats. 25 seconds left of four on four, and then they're going to be about a 40-second power play opportunity for Northern Michigan. Mavericks have had some opportunities to stretch this lead out. You hope that it doesn't come back to bite them. Spooner. Spooner gets to the ice as he lost a skate on the far boards. Wildcats get the zone, dump it down, and now they're on a... Power play. Dupravnik played ahead. Here comes Rivera. Mavericks with a long shot. Score! Oh, my. That's an awful goal to give up. Nolan Kent just got beat from way out on a wrist shot. That's incredible. There really couldn't have been too much of a screen on the play no. at all, but literally just inside the blue line. The second goal was a tough one to give up. That one just really bad. I have no idea. Shorthanded tally. WCHA has the nation's lead as far as wow. a conference with shorthanded goals. That's crazy. That might be one of the uh, di more difficult ones for a, a team to give up on a power play, but Rivera again with the goal. Nick Rivera put that puck on net. Just hoping to get the puck on net, nothing more. He couldn't have thought that was going in, and it did. Six. Absolutely take it. Very short-handed, 12-21. They're going to give Naprovnik the assist on the play. And also Hukinson picking up the assist. So still a power play. Blue with it. Power play is just about over as Smith is now out of the box. Mavericks back at full strength. Smith steps in to the intended pass. Zmolik. Got crossed up there with Hukinson. Nice job by Smith to get out and force the issue out of the zone. Smith breaks in, lost the puck along the boards, and now played the other way. Looking for night. No icing on that play, so McNeely has it in the Mavericks with the 3-1 lead as we're down inside 640 left to go here in the second. Only goal of the period, that shorthanded effort just a few moments ago by Rivera. The six of the year from the Provnik and Hukinson. Doer ridden out along the boards. Mavericks have to wait to clear and they'll bring it in with Doer. Doer low angle shot. Oh, they had Spooner tied up front. Now he was tied up on the play. Don't see an interference call there, Dan. Played down low, Clee, and that's what you have. Just back the other way. A two-on-one break and right away as soon as the Mavericks Got the big goal. This time it's the Wildcats coming back to get an important goal, cutting it back down to a one-goal Maverick And lead. the Wildcats absolutely had to finish this off. A two-on-one break. Dryden McKay kind of left out uh, hanging to his left, and the net's wide open. And the Wildcats get to within one again, 3-2. You know that, what I'm talking about. Goal. Oh, yeah, no question. Spooner I mean, gets yeah. dropped coming down between the circles on one side. Well, I'm sure that's what Mike Casey yeah. is talking about. It's not going to matter 
because they're not going to say you're right, but he's well, going to make his point. But when you make a yes. call like they oh, did on that penalty, yeah. you open yourself up to yes. that the rest of the night. Yes. Yeah, that was that was um, a very poor interference call off the faceoff. There's the look goal at it by here. Rivera. Yeah, that that's hard to imagine that that puck went in. Is this the uh, yeah door coming down and we're too close on the play, but you saw yeah. Spooner get dropped between the circles, and then the play comes back the other way. And it's one of the few odd man rushes the Mavericks have given up all night long, and they finish. Thirteen fifty seven, the time of the goal for Klee, his sixth goal of the year. Oh my gosh! That Score! One went in. That's wow. terrible. That's just an awful goal. Over his left shoulder. I mean, at some point, yeah, if you're Grant Patoli, right yeah, now. in fact, they're making a change right now. Wow. wow. That was an incredibly bad goal. There's no way that goal can go in. Just I'm writing none. down some statistics, yeah. and all of a sudden, Nolan Kent had a night tonight to forget. He's given up two goals this period that just can't happen. That one went up over his left shoulder. I, I just. I don't know. He's, he's too good of a goaltender for this to happen. Another low angle well, shot there yeah, at the just, near side. Yeah. I, for, Charlie for, the, for the Mavericks, he'll take it. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm sure no one can say, and I can't believe what's happened here. Gerard with his 12th goal of the season. It's a tough <laughs> angle, but, I mean, you're used to that. There, there's you, you got a post there, and you, you block it. Yep. But he just gave it out there. Interesting developments here in the last couple of minutes. To say the least. And, and the Mavericks back out to a two-goal lead here as we're down to 520 left to go. Zmolik. And now we're going to get a penalty on the play on the turnover right outside the offensive zone. That's going to be a hooky hook, call yep. on the problem. Yeah, the fans are getting their money's worth in many ways tonight, Don. Yelling at the officials, uh, screaming for goals, wanting reviews, all sorts of stuff. Got to look at Hawthorne here, but... The Provnick goes to the bench for two minutes. Mavericks, these are the sixth power play of the night for Northern Michigan. Just like Mike Hastings said, we need to run to the box all night long tonight. <laughs> Maverick's got to find a way to kill this off. Take some momentum. Into potentially the second intermission. Again, hooking call against Napravnik. Blue is back. Nardi with it to the far side. Carried into the zone by DeMay. Blue left off for Craighead. Up on top, Ballou will leave things off and then DeMay actually fanned on that along the boards and cleared by the Mavericks and Hookinson. And that's a tough break for Vincent DeMay. He had a good look but got absolutely nothing on the shot. Reedman left off now at the point for Sorensen. Volton along the near boards. Sorensen gets a return feed from Gantus. Newhouse. Reedman in the corner stood up by Mackey and a loose puck picked up by McNeely. He'll just flip it down the ice. The entry passes, the drop pass that the Wildcats drop is about as deep as any team that I remember this year. When they drop it back to their defensemen, they're way back at their own blue line. And it doesn't look like they're generating a whole lot of speed when they're coming across the line. They have to go so far before or after they get the puck before they ever get to the offensive blue line. Brought right into the zone and a shot in before things get set up and an easy save for McKay. Still 25 seconds left in the Northern Michigan power play. There's six of the night. A couple of them have been abbreviated. 
I will give them that. They do have one power play goal in the contest. I feel sorry for whoever has to do the stats and, or, and, it's, <laughs> and highlights between periods coming up here well, because there's been a lot of stuff going on. I'm a little bit behind in my stat sheet. I'm the first <laughs> to tell you that, but the last time I was trying to write a stat, I missed a goal. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll set the pen down for now and what's been a while, the last 10 minutes of the second period. Vincent DeMay. Blue to the far side for Craighead. This game is not going to end 4-2, Don. No. It's not going to end without an, at least a few more power play opportunities, I think. I think you are correct. Dubrovnik is out of the box. Played back into the zone now for Craighead, who's watched by McNeely. Into the corner, Nardi. Ballou has it as he's watched now by French. Loose puck picked up by Dubrovnik and floated out of the zone. Dubrovnik with some speed out of the box. Trying to tap one back for Smith. Down to 250 left in the second. Both teams as that one has flipped up into the bench area. Both teams with the same total of goals in the period. Mavericks with two in the first and the second. One for each period on the scoreboard for the Wildcats is with We'll take a face off, or actually, we'll take a timeout here late in the second. It's 4 2, Mavericks on top. See where uh, the Wildcats rank nationally in many of the offensive statistics. Power play percentage, that's uh, one that's been a bugaboo, although, again, now they're one for six in the contest. We talked about their penalty kill numbers. Offensively, especially five on five, again, these guys. And put a lot of points up on the board as far as assists and goals. And 3.5 right a game is exceptional. That's top well, 10 in the nation. You know, As good as that, that is, the Mavericks again yep. close to 3.7. Good for fifth. And they both allow so few goals, but they're both taking a little bit of a hurt tonight on that. Nolan Kent's night ends with four goals, which is way above his norm. That's a big shock considering yeah. the guy, again, coming off a uh, performance in the month of January. And, and he gave up a couple goals tonight that were just head shakers. Sorensen. Flipped out to center ice. That was broken up on the pass intended for Raider. Sandlin trying to get back into the play. Dallas Gerads, now Sandlin behind the net, up on top for Zmolik. Spooner for Dallas Gerads. Mavericks holding the zone again. We're five on five as we're down now to two minutes left to go in the second. Played out by Raider. Caleb Shore over skates the puck. He stumps it in behind the net. At the point, it's held by Blue. Gerads, now Sandlin one more time. He taps it out to clear, and Blue is back. Slattery, it's a hip check there from Zmolik and drops on the plate, but the Wildcats have it in the zone. I think both coaches would, would be happy to play a lot of five on five in the third period. Then Union out in front, swept aside by McKay. Slattery. Lowen trying to bring it out front, but he's tied up by Scheid, and now Jeremko steps in for Minnesota State. Jeremko tapped ahead by Sandlin. Off the glass, dumped in, and the Mavericks are going to start a line change. And Union ahead for Reedman. Gerard has to wait for the Mavericks to clear. It will be carried in by Connor Mackey. Shot there would have been the first shot that Hawthorne had seen, but it's tipped defensively off a stick and into the net. Hawthorne has an 892 save percentage on the season, and that is not going to get it done at the Division One level. You have to be over 90 percent. But his goals against on the season is pretty good at 2.82. Hawthorne actually a goalie of record in the a couple of games two weeks ago against 
The Nanooks up in Alaska in what was a 4-4 tie and then a 4-2 win, so that's his last outing. He also played in the uh, Friday night game against the Mavericks that uh, the Mavericks won 5-2 back in December. Race for the puck, and here comes an odd man rush the other way for Newhouse, and Dryden McKay nicely comes out to cut down that angle and make a, what looked to be a very easy save, but boy, a dangerous play for the Mavericks deep here into the second period. Well, McKay did look behind him just to make sure, but he was pretty confident he had it. Want to make sure nothing dribbled behind him here as you look. You'll see as the play start, he looks back, just make sure, yeah, it's not behind me. I don't think he could feel it for sure, but never in doubt. Nope. It didn't dribble through. We've seen goaltenders have that happen before and not know that it's dribbled through. True. It actually happened to Dryden McKay once this year where the puck uh, got behind him and he was looking for it in front of him and couldn't find it. Not quite sure what the delay in time is here. They're going to put some more time back up on the board, okay? So we're going to move it from almost 24 seconds to 25.2. And Nardi will step in for the draw along with Spooner for the Wildcats and Mavericks, respectively. The Mavericks want to get set up knowing that this is a pretty good opportunity for the Wildcats late, but the Mavericks, another important draw they won, but then it was Molik or Naprovnik who lost an edge still in the zone. Off some bodies wide here on the near side, Craighead. Now Nardi has it along the boards. Down to 10 seconds left in the period. Bouncing puck set wide. Smolik will just force it into the corner and look to tie things up and take care of the rest of the time in the period, which he does. Good play there by Smolik and the Mavericks. And we are at the end of the second period of play. We were 2-1 after the first. In the second, a shorthanded goal by Rivera. His six followed by a goal by Klee. His six for the Wildcats. So at that time, we were 3-2. And then the goal by Charlie Gerard that uh, took care of the night for Nolan Kent for Gerard his 12th of the season. That's where we stand at the end of two periods of hockey. Again, our score from downtown Mankato here on the Maverick Hockey Weekend. It's Minnesota State 4 and Northern Michigan 2. Biology professors at Minnesota State Mankato had a big idea. Immerse first-year students in hands-on scientific research. I'm already researching the brain and how it controls behavior. I'm studying how cancer starts so we can figure out how to stop it. Our RISE Bio Scholarship Program, supported by the National Science Foundation, gives students unique access to real-world research, preparing future leaders in science. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. Stick to what we know best. I'm Larissa Schulich of Minnesota State Mankato students, and I have a big idea. I want to be among the few women who have a cockpit view of the world. My dad has his pilot's license. He inspired me to put in the hard work necessary to fly commercial planes. Now, with the guidance of my professors and thousands of hours of expert training, my big idea is becoming a reality, one flight at a time. Big ideas, real world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. Back downtown Mankato where the score is now 4-2. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. 
I'm Marissa Voss, and I am joined by senior forward captain number 23, Nick Rivera. Nick getting an absolute snipe of a goal with that shorthanded goal in the second. That's got to give this team and you some confidence. Yeah, you know, um, I was fortunate enough. Julie made a good play to me, and I just tried to get in a puck on net, you know, try to test his goaltender as much as we can. Uh, he's letting a couple cheeky ones, but he's made some big saves, so we're just trying to get pucks in the net, and it was a great play by 15 for sure. So that game has been incredibly physical since puck drop. And you guys have stayed out of the box from the second to the first period. What can you attribute to that? You know, we just got to keep moving our feet, and uh, you got to know when to hit. And I mean, clearly, uh, hitting is a part of the game, but you got to make sure it's an effective hit and uh, try to separate them from the puck if it's necessary. And if not, you just got to move with your feet and try to uh, play with the puck as much as possible. So, Thanks, Nick. Good luck in the third. Thank you. Coming back from break, we will send it up to Don, who will be discussing. We will be sending it up to Don, who will be discussing stuff with the head coach of Northern Michigan. Stay tuned, guys. I'm Minnesota State Mankato graduate Darren Cotter, and I had a big idea. Use my technology skills and passion for entrepreneurship to build a successful internet marketing company. When I was a student in Mankato, I started Inbox Dollars in my dorm room, and today it's grown into a thriving business. Now I can use my expertise to mentor and invest in other Minnesota tech companies, helping them turn their big ideas into fast-growing businesses. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at MNS. I'm Larissa Schulich of Minnesota State Mankato students, and I have a big idea. I want to be among the few women who have a cockpit view of the world. My dad has his pilot's license. He inspired me to put in the hard work necessary to fly commercial planes. Now, with the guidance of my professors and thousands of hours of expert training, my big idea is becoming a reality, one flight at a time. Big ideas, real world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. We're back in Mankato. Let's spend a few moments right now with Northern Michigan head coach Grant Patoni. And coach, uh, boy, last time that you guys seen the Mavericks since that time, you have been on quite a roll. Only one loss, and that was uh, to top ranked Cornell at the time, a team you had actually tied the night before. So certainly as we head into the last month of the season, you must like where your team stands. Yeah, we've gotten gotten goaltending. I mean, that's been the biggest change, and um, we've got some depth scoring. So, um, you know, we're playing better. You know, our special teams is an area that we have to improve on, and um, as well as we've played. You can't keep winning if you don't improve your special teams. You guys just about swept every honor there was as far as the uh, monthly uh, awards that go out for the forward uh, defenseman. I know actually that's the one you didn't win, and you had an honorable mention right there. It's hard to single out any one guy in this team because they all seem to be peaking right now and certainly gelling. Yeah, we, we've had a couple seniors, Craighead and Volton, who have really had good second halves. And um, as everybody knows, you need your seniors to drive you in college hockey, especially down the stretch. And we only have three of them. So it's important that they play well. And, and those two guys have solidified it. Uh, you know, some secondary scoring for us has made a big difference. Are you surprised by the scoring you get by some of the underclassmen? Obviously, they came in highly talented and heralded, but they've made some big contributions right out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, we, we liked them in recruiting, and um, they had good freshman years. But you know, you, you kind of you find out who what they really are when they're sophomores, and um, they they've. Lochran's been really good all year. Um, a couple of the other guys have been streaky, and yeah. um, you know we need them to, to get back on the right side of that streak, and especially down the stretch to, to push it, push us forward a little bit. As we focus in on this weekend series, I know one of the things is you've talked a little bit about the Mavericks here. You've been very complimentary, obviously top-ranked defense in the country, and that's the egg you have to crack here this weekend to try to get a couple past them. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you you look at that team, and the, you know, hey, when you come into the league. You know, coming from from Minnesota now to Northern, and you, you want to replicate who the, the top of the hill is, and they've been the top of the hill for a long time. They have great forward depth. They're long and strong on the back end, and, and they've gotten great goaltending. And to me, the diff, you know, for us, the biggest thing is how do you start the game? And you know, when we've played them and and uh, come out on the wrong side of it, and more than than we have the right side, it's been the first periods. And uh, when we've had success, we've had good starts to the game and um, had them to defend a little bit, and, and that's going to be a big key for us this weekend. Statistically, a lot of common ground between the two teams. But one area there's a bit of discrepancy. You know, they are obviously coming in, although they've struggled lately. Power play play for them and your penalty kill you're able to knock a shutout Ferris last uh, week on the Saturday night game but I know penalty kill has been one of those areas you guys need to improve upon yeah big time um, you know like I said the stretch since uh, we've played them uh, we've lost once and 
Um, it, we've been doing it without the special teams, and, and when you go on the road, you better pack your special teams, you better pack your goalie, and um, they're going to both be important tonight. Do you guys talk much about, obviously, standing-wise with Bemidji State being idle this weekend? For you guys, you want to keep pace with the Mavericks, but obviously getting close with the series against the Beavers next weekend, I don't know if it puts on any extra credence this, this well, time. I, I think you're mindful of it. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to try gain some ground when you can because these are our games at hand, and, mm-hmm. um, you know, coming out of here with, with points is going to be important. It'll put us in a, it, with a chance to be in striking distance next weekend and you know that's the goal for us is being able to you know maybe next weekend surpass them all right so keys for you going into tonight what do you has to go well for you to get some points physicality uh number one and and that goes hand in hand with our puck management you know when, when we're playing well the pucks are in good areas and and you know not just dumping pucks in you know we, we want to put them in areas where we can get them and then have some physicality and, and keep the puck in their end um and we got to get out of our end you know their their four check is heavy and it's strong and it's quick and you know, if, if we're not back to the puck with numbers, it's going to be a long night. All right. That is Grant Petoni with the Wildcats as you are watching Maverick Hockey here on a Maverick Hockey Week. I'm Larissa Schulich, a Minnesota State Mankato student, and I have a big idea. I want to be among the few women who have a cockpit view of the world. My dad has his pilot's license. He inspired me to put in the hard work necessary to fly commercial planes. Now, with the guidance of my professors and thousands of hours of expert training, my big idea is becoming a reality, one flight at a time. Big ideas, real world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. Time to get hooked. For ticket information, call the MSU Athletic Office or see our website. Biology professors at Minnesota State Mankato had a big idea. Immerse first-year students in hands-on scientific research. I'm already researching the brain and how it controls behavior. I'm studying how cancer starts so we can figure out how to stop it. Our RISE Bio Scholarship Program, supported by the National Science Foundation, gives students unique access to real-world research, preparing future leaders in science. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. So the Don Westfall along with Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato. Nearing the end of the second intermission, you see our score. Mavericks doubling up on Northern Michigan by a 4-2 margin. They also had doubled them up after the first 2-1, to one, but the Mavericks coming back with a couple goals here in the second. Let's take a look at those goals, Dan, and the first one should be shorthanded up. Nick Rivera shorthanded, uh, just an unbelievable goal. His sixth of the season from Dubrovnik and Hookinson at 12-24. Mavericks up uh, by uh, 3-1 at that point. Then uh, Garrett Klee at 13:57, his fourth of the season makes it uh, four to two, and then the Mavericks are make it three to two. Then the Mavericks make it four two on a very odd angle for Charlie Girard, his 12th of the year from Lutz and Smolik at 14:22. Shots are 33-19. Attempted shots 51-36. You see the block shots there. 
Penalty minutes at 14-8, uh, and faceoffs won now 21-20 in favor of Northern Michigan as we're through two periods of play. Bowling Green in overtime tonight downs Alaska Anchorage. It's Lake Superior State over Michigan Tech tonight 7-3. Huntsville up on Alaska 6-4. UMD leading in the third period over Omaha 2-1. The Gophers down in Michigan State, 3-1 in the third period of play. And it's a 2-2 overtime tie for Penn State and Ohio State tonight. You see the conference standings, Dom, and you see what uh, these next 20 minutes, how important these next 20 minutes are for both clubs, especially for Northern Michigan. Yeah, for the Mavericks, obviously, the five-point lead over Idle Bemidji State for Northern Michigan, uh, you know, trying to just track down Bemidji State with the Beavers off this weekend. Again, Northern Michigan hosts Bemidji State next weekend, but for the Mavericks, all of a sudden they can get uh, potentially three more points out of this one, open up an eight-point lead, and then for Northern Michigan, it makes tomorrow night almost yeah. a must-win if they want to, you know, obviously they stand in really good shape as far as hosting the first round series, but uh, you'd like to host that semifinal round as well. Well, I mean, right now, they're in a position where I'm sure they haven't given up on hopes of winning this conference now they know it's going to be tough but they still have a chance to win this conference so this period is very very important if they're going to have any chance of doing that just saw john hawthorne in the nets he was not the starting goaltender tonight after that goal by gerard grant patelny electing to pull starter nolan kent in favor for the freshman john hawthorne well two goals tonight that nolan kent probably hasn't given up all season that were just that just bad goals and it happens to everybody and so we start off the third here. No one's on a power play, which has been rare tonight. The Mavericks have uh, given up six power play opportunities. They've given up one power play goal, but granted, they've also scored a power play tally. As it played in on net, and Hawthorne has to cover up. Mavericks 0 for 3 with the man advantage tonight. Lots to talk about yeah. with Coach Hastings, not only after this game, but even on Monday morning, Dan. Yeah, he joins us every Monday morning at 9-10 on the KTOE Morning Blend. And myself and Mike Sullivan will look back uh, at this weekend and the bye week for the Mavericks. Hoping for six points out of this weekend and a big lead in the conference. Wildcats went in the draw. They bring it out to center ice. Just put one in on that big rebound right up the slot. Blue. Fires one off the body of Craighead into the corner. Spooner has it. Trying to clear. It's to the side of the net. Still along the side. Wow. It's, <laughs> that's just such a dangerous spot. But the Mavericks able to bring it out. Dallas Gerads. Tied up by Schultz on the play. Now Doer behind the net. Mavericks allowed 14 shots on goal in the first period, just five in the second period. And that's the reason that they're so difficult to score on, Don. They just don't have periods usually where they give up 14 shots on goal. Doer trying to get something in the corner, although Volton catches up to it first. Played off a dasher and tapped in off the stick of Craighead. So the Mavericks will come back as Wildcats go off on a change. Andy Carroll ahead for Lutz, who flips one into the zone. DeMay off the board, is able to clear, but Mackey turns things around. My assumption would be that Mike Hastings' words were stay out of the box and let's clean up the defensive end and get out of here. We've scored enough goals to win this game already. Four goals should be enough for this team to win. It's just, you know, play, play good team defense the way you have all season long, and you're fine. Into the corner, Charlie Gerard tries to chip it out, but it's dumped back in. DeMay is tied up by McNeely. Slattery and Jeremko stepping in. Along the boards, Connor Mackey gets some help there from Gerard, and it's cleared. Vessio comes all the way back into his zone, along with Jeremko. Vessio chipped out by Napravnik bouncing puck that Jeremko will carry into the zone. Smith back for the Mavericks off the boards to Zmolik. Flipped ahead for Toomey. And Toomey put himself offside on the play. Thank you to the free press for being tonight. 
Bates off will come back outside the zone with 17 24 again as Dan mentioned earlier we are back tomorrow night to complete this two game series starting time is an hour earlier so it'll be a six o'clock pregame show 607 is the face off so it'll be that short turnaround Dan from the women's game to the men's game and, and only one home series left the regular season after tonight or after this weekend. Smolik down low sends one. It's bounced out now in the slot areas. Toomey trying to play one back, but it'll come all the way back into the zone where McKay will leave things off for Smolik. Strong move there by Smolik to try to rid himself of the check from Plea. Newhouse. Almost a turnover there by Neprovnik. Newhouse ahead, tapped in by Raider. Bukinson ahead. Now there, yeah, Maverick, yeah, they are going to get a hooking call on that play. So Mavericks will be the benefactor of some extra time here with the empty net to the far corner for Sandlin. Sandlin swings it all the way around for Carroll. Mavericks just uh, unable to really generate anything as they're getting some fresh players out, and the whistle blows as soon as the Wildcats touch it, and the Mavericks will go on their fourth. Power play of the night. Well, chance to finish it right here. I mean, it, most likely it's over already because they don't give up five goals in a game almost ever. But if they can make it 5 2 here, you got to like the chances. You see the hook there, and pretty easy. Mavericks 0 for 3 with the man advantage. They bring out Jeremko between Gerard and Van Oshaw with Scheid and Lutz at the points. Draw one back to Lutz. Scheid. Jeremko along the goal line for Charlie Gerard. Lutz will step in to take it from the corner. Now Gerard and corner back on the near side. Jeremko. Shy Lutz tees one up and Newhouse has that save and covers up before Gerard can get to the rebound. Fans, don't forget to cast your Good puck your movement though. They got off a decent shot. No chance for a rebound and face off will come to the left of the goaltender with exactly 16 minutes to go in this one. Mavericks leading by a pair and a minute 35 to go on the man advantage. Mavericks just want to make sure not make any mistakes on their own blue line and give up a, a break the other way. You know, if they don't score in this next minute 35, that's fine. More than anything else, just don't give up any chances. The other way is the most important thing. The Provnik down low. They tried to feed Toomey. They had tried that play earlier, and that's the shot that went off the post back in the second. Actually, that was the first period. Smith near side for Neprovnik. Neprovnik one more time. Up on top, Connor Mackey. Down low, the rebound is there. Dallas Gerrads unable to unleash it. Smith now has it. One minute left in the power play for Dallas Gerrads. For Toomey. Toomey again with it. Dallas Gerrads score! That's the dagger right there. I'm not exactly sure how he snuck this one through. But Gerrads with the finish at 4.41. And the Mavericks lead 5-2. First power play goal of the night for the Mavericks. You see it again here on the replay, Dan. It's good puck movement and a shot from below the dot. Dallas Durant's his sixth goal of the season now at a five-game scoring streak of which he has six points during that time span. And three points last weekend, so a guy who's heating up at a great time for the Mavericks. And it's a 5-2 Maverick lead. Hookinson, head for Dewar. Spooner. Newhouse on the far side. Mackey and Toomey assisting on that play. And uh, we talked about scoring streaks. Well, Connor Mackey continues his now to five games as well, where he now has eight points in the last five contests. Sorensen gets dumped by a couple of Mavericks. Carroll flips it over to Van Alshaw. 
Lead pass for Dewar. Ben Osha will pick it up. Quick shot. Newhouse will cover up for the save. Well, and now it gets down to tomorrow night for the Wildcats to have any chance. Mavericks on top. Nearing the midway. Third year head coach Grant Patoni. This team coming in to the night's contest. Third place in the WCHA. And they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole here against the top defensive team in the country in the Mavericks. Mavericks with the two goals given up are already over what their uh, yearly total has been up to this point. St. Cloud scored seven against the Mavericks. Otherwise, I mean, it's one or two goals against the Mavericks all season long. So uh, you can put this one down in the W column for the Mavericks with 14-27 to go. They you, don't give up. They don't give up three goal leads. You're in just the third so grade. you're so bold with those. Well, I, I'm. It just doesn't happen. No we, worries. Uh, I'm not worried at all. No. I get paid to worry a little bit. <laughs> Blue with the shot. You get that was paid? Blocked. Oh, sure, handsomely. Well, that's interesting. I need to talk to somebody, apparently. Well, sure. Now you know better than that. That's true. Zmolik. Out in front, there's a dangerous opportunity. Still down low, Volton with the backhand that McKay will quickly cover up on. You think you and I just are here for the pizza? Uh, well, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> If, if they leave us any. Yeah, that doesn't happen as often as it used to. We work with some very hungry college students who love free food. I remember loving free food. It's been a long time ago. Yeah, well, it doesn't happen as often as it used to. I think I know where you went to school, and I know that there was a really quick late-night hamburger joint not too not far away. Not too far away. <laughs> away. That's very true. Always good for a slider, weren't you? Yes. Rivera? Left off for McNeely. Here comes French. Vessio steps into that play before he got in on net. Still behind Newhouse. Sandlin trying to create the turnover there as he's working things over with Remco. Now Vessio. Late ahead. At the line, Lutz turns it right back into the zone. Vessio steps back. Uremko on lead pass is broken up. Hukinson will come back for the Mavericks. Long lead pass. Here comes Lutz. Lutz will just tap it into the corner rather than taking the long slap shot. Although those have been effective tonight. <laughs> Carroll. That's very true. Now, there was a real actual interference out in front of the net that didn't get called. Uremko stood up along the boards by Sorensen. Flipped out of the zone and now a race for the puck. Newhouse, Dallas Durads gets back. Hukinson trying to corral it, forced to the far side. Nardi up on top for Ballou. Play down to near the goal line. Lochran, first time we've talked about him in a while. Has it behind the net where he's watched by Carroll. Griffin Lochran. Nardi on the near side, stood up by Uremko. Played to the near side. Dallas Gerard steps in. Gontus as well for the Wildcats. A lot of zone time, but not a whole lot happening with it. Tied up back into the corner one more time. Dug out by Gontus, who has it out in front trying to feed Lofton. Blue tees up a shot, and that's off a of Karam. It got redirected out in front. Mavericks never were able to clear the zone, nope. get puck possession to do it. Well, and that happens. if um, there, are, there are coaches that will tell you if the puck is in your zone for more than 20 seconds, you should ice it. And they, they just they will take the icing. But Mavericks really never gained control, got it out of there. They pull within two with 11.49 to go. Again, Blue had the shot from the point, but somehow out in front, whether it was a Maverick or one of the Wildcats, but there were a lot of sticks on the ice, and somehow it got knocked past Dryden McKay to make it 5-3 game. Wildcats still trail by two. Zmolk will come back after the faceoff. Mm -hmm. 
Nardi and Gontus assisting. They're going to say that if it was tipped, it was off of Maverick as it goes up into the net. And we'll get a stoppage of play. Maloo's fifth goal of the season from Duluth, Minnesota. Maloo is an honorable mention for a defensive player of the month. And again, coming uh, off a couple of outstanding years for Northern Michigan as one of those highly heralded players coming in and potentially looking some postseason honors as well. Mike Hastings said they're going to call his name a lot tonight. He spends a lot of time in the ice, and it'd be interesting. That's one stat we do not get, but he did say he can't play the entire game, though. I remember that as well. As Smith took a hit along the boards by Uremko, and obviously with a little bit of momentum, we'll see. And we're going to get a penalty on the play. And they're going to get, get a hold. holding call, and, and is the Mavericks um, trying to see what gate opens? It Toomey's might, coming to the box. Oh, that's the last thing the Mavericks yeah. needed is after giving up that goal and already with some momentum. This is a great opportunity for the Wildcats. And another another penalty in the offensive zone that's yeah, not that's, needed. No, that, that's you know second or third offensive zone penalty. You see it right there. But just the amount of penalties in general that the Mavericks have taken tonight, something Mike Hastings is not going to be happy with. Seventh power play of the night for the Wildcats. Near side where it will be played by Craighead. Blue with the shot, and that's in a glove save for McKay. Joseph Nardi at... 5'10", pushing on a Maverick player who looked like he was a full foot taller than him. Mavericks are going to bring out some fresh penalty killers, so they'll bring out Uremko along with Hukinson, Zmolik, and Lutz. This draw played back to the point for Blue. Craighead watched by Uremko, and it comes out of the zone. Yamko is out there to win the draw, and he's off, and the Mavericks bring out another skater now in French. Hukinson will try to spin along the boards, but it's stopped over there by Lochran. Craighead near side, blocked by Smolik. Smolik and Craighead after it. Nardi steps into the play. Back for Craighead and Ballou at the line and picked up by French, and he'll be able to carry and clear. Coming in shorthanded, has it poked away, and able to get a shot in on net. I thought he was just going to carry it into the corner, but made a late cut toward the net. Well, you drop that inside shoulder and just kind of lean in and see what happens, and he got a decent shot off. Schultz along the boards after that rush. French left the ice for Rivera, who has a shorthanded goal tonight. Rivera unable to play that off the point. Out in front, got redirected, but into the corner. Volton, Newhouse. McNeely breaks up that pass, and Rivera sends it down the ice. Now with 20 seconds left in the power play. One last rush for the Wildcats. They really needed to do something with this power play. Smolik and Sorensen on the near side. Schultz steps into the play. Into the corner, now back for Sorensen. Down low, it's redirected wide. Toomey's out of the box. He goes into the play, and now the Mavericks will pick it up, and they'll actually carry out with numbers. Toomey, Toomey down low, still has it, and it's knocked off his stick. McConnor Mackey, Toomey in the slot. That one's wristed wide. Smith behind the net. He'll just carry as Toomey is off, and the Mavericks are trying to hold the zone, but... Errant pass between Scheid and Smith nullifies that. Dallas Gerads is back with 8.40 left to go here in the third. Mavericks on top, 5-3. Both teams with a goal in the third. Yeremko and Gerads. Now Spooner for the Mavericks. Walker Doerr. Doerr with Van Cleon, uh, Cleon him rather. Doer out in front looking for some room. 
Bouncing puck. It's still to the side of the net. No one with possession. Mavericks get it. Dallas Gerads looks for the wraparound and ran out of real estate. Now here comes Northern Michigan the other way. Caleb Schroer dumps it wide of the net. Raider is back. Schroer trying to feed Plea. Blue fans on that attempt. And now here comes Walker Doer. And he'll just get to the line, dump it in, take the hit. <laughs> is he... He dumped it into the corner, and he sent Van Unen on a big spill. Reedman chips it into the neutral ice area. Charlie Gerard for the Mavericks just flips it in. No icing on the play as Blue has to come back. Slattery. Lutz is there. Quickly turns one around as Charlie Gerard was out in front. Good play by Lutz on the turnover. But a surprisingly quick shot off there. Pretty accurate shot. Andy Carroll comes back for the Mavericks. Taps it along the boards. Lutz to the far side for McNeely. He'll just get to the red line and dump it in. Newhouse near side for Sorensen. Sorensen low angle shot. Rebound right to the far side, but Gontus was tied up on the play. Newhouse threw some traffic sent wide. Lochran has his attempt blocked. Goes to the far side in the corner. Rivera and Carroll there for the Mavericks. McNeely sweeps it along the boards for Sandlin. Sandlin played ahead. French and Newhouse are at it in the corner. It's a really good back check by the Mavericks a moment ago. An open net, and if there wasn't for the back check, that probably would have made it a 5-4 game. Icing's the call with 6.18 left to go, and we'll bring a faceoff back to the Mavericks offensive zone. They have the shot on goalie, 40 to 23. Well, we mentioned that 4-2 was not going to stand up as the final score the way this game has gone. Uh, each team with a goal here in the third period, and there's still 6.18 to go. Didn't know what to expect after the first 10 minutes, Dan, because no. bodies were flying shots on goal on either side. Yeah, it was crazy. The first 10 minutes was was really up-tempo. And you knew there was no way just no. that they were going to be able to keep that pace or up. Or the Mavericks were going to end up with 86 shots on goal for the game, which doesn't happen. Face-off. Center ice. Is to center ice. Mike Hastings not real enamored with that. There's been more than a few uh, head-shaking things that have happened this evening. Volton and Smith will step in for the draw at center ice. Mavericks get the draw, and Hookinson will just dump it in. Uramco takes away from Toomey. Nice job by Toomey to come back, force a turnover, and it's dumped right back in. Off the glass, Naprovnik trying to chip it and hold the zone, but it's played out by Bolton. Craighead has it down low. Loose puck still there, and Toomey will pick things up for the Mavericks. He and Naprovnik are out two on two. Naprovnik now for Connor Mackey. Score! That's pretty hockey right there. That's the dagger the Mavericks were looking for, and a lot of credit to me and Naprovnik coming up. But then out of nowhere, all of a sudden, the offensive-minded Connor Mackey comes up and picks up another goal, his fifth on the season. He's got a goal and an assist tonight. And the Mavericks back up to a three-goal lead, now doubling up 6-3. and 14-16, the time of the goal. Fans waving their Maverick towels they got tonight. You can feel the breeze here. I feel a little bit better now, Dan. Yeah. I was. I have to be honest with you. I'm thinking, uh-oh, after uh, Northern Michigan had scored that goal, and then when they got the power play right away, I'm thinking this is going to get more interesting than it needs to. But as you indicated, Wildcats never were able to take advantage of that. Well, the first chance they get now, you, you have to assume they're going to pull the goaltender. With about five and a half to go, there's no sense in protecting a three-goal loss. So we'll look to... Grant Patoni see when he's going to make the decision to pull his goaltender. Newhouse comes back. Played ahead. Carroll takes care of the initial attempt, but dumped in finally. Zmolik to Carroll. 
Sorensen will come back and play it. Fans on his attempt, and Charlie Gerard's there for the Mavericks. Just wants to keep it in the corner and take more time off. Gerard, one timer. That one was off a stick of Reedman out front from the shot of Lutz, and we'll take a break. 446 left to go. Maverick 6 3 on top of Northern Michigan. Good luck with that. <laughs> Mike Hastings is feeling a little more comfortable right now with the sixth goal lead here late in tonight's contest. You see the Mavericks again off next weekend, and then we return to take on the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville the 21st and 2nd, our last regular season games of the year before the Mavericks close out the regular season campaign. With By that time, could be a, a game really for positioning, if yep. nothing else, maybe for more for Bermidji. We hope the Mavericks have it locked up by then. Speaking of the Beavers... They will be on the road at Northern Michigan next weekend, which would be an extremely interesting series before making the trip to Anchorage. And then they close out the regular season up home against this Maverick club. Well, the Mavericks get a big three points tonight. Hoping for the th same thing tomorrow night and make it a two-team race the rest of the way. Shied back behind his own net. Zmolik, Lutz, played ahead now for Charlie Gerard. Jeremko is in the zone looking maybe for what could have been a rebound, but it's blocked defensively. Shied with play, the down low. Jeremko has it on his backhand. Thought about trying to flip something over to Lutz, but it was broken up. Race for the puck and an icing against Northern Michigan. Mavericks, I think the rest of the game here, you get the puck deep every chance you get. Get it down. You know, below the goal line and keep it there. 4,436 fans tonight, Don. Pretty good crowd. I, my assumption is it'll be even bigger tomorrow night. You know, really the only blemish so far really for the Mavericks has just been the number of penalties yes. they've taken. Played to the point, but Connor Mackey holds for Minnesota State. The Remco over to Slattery now. Now that one's played up into the Maverick bench. And we'll have another face-off. We've got Lutz, Spooner, Rivera, Gerard, Mackey. Those are some names that have scored a lot of goals for the Mavericks. We've got one more break to take, however, where, again, you're watching Minnesota State Hockey here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. I'm Minnesota State Mankato graduate Darren Cotter, and I had a big idea. Use my technology skills and passion for entrepreneurship to build a successful internet marketing company. When I was a student in Mankato, I started Inbox Dollars in my dorm room, and today it's grown into a thriving business. Now I can use my expertise to mentor and invest in other Minnesota tech companies, helping them turn their big ideas into fast-growing businesses. Big ideas, real-world thinking. Minnesota State Mankato. Go further at mnsu.edu. Inside four minutes remaining here in tonight's contest is another faceoff in the zone. The Mavericks win in that one. We're going to get a penalty against the Beavers right after the faceoff, and it's going to be a slashing call. They're bringing over Lochran. Lochran for the Wildcats comes to the bench at 16-14. Lochran with the goal, or with one goal tonight to again, uh, now with 21 on the season, leading the country. But he'll spend a couple minutes in the penalty box. They had really no chance to come back down three with this little left, but I'm sure they're not real happy with him going to the box this late in the game besides. Takes away any opportunity that you have of pulling the goalie or anything like that even. Mavericks one for four on the power play. This is their fifth opportunity. Right along the blue line, it's sent down. Not the best entry in the zone there, so they'll try it again. But the clock is their friend right now. Chipped in by French. He and Remco are after it. Sandlin trying to get puck possession, but Yemko will pick it up, and then he plays it out in front. Aaron Pass and Maverick still in the zone with Sandlin. Now Connor Mackey. 
This time the Mavericks have set things up. French down low for Sandlin. Josh French trying to feed one down low for Sandlin on top of the crease. Rivera, McNeely, Connor Mackey, McNeely, French out in front. Rivera tries a one timer. Guys here on the power play, we don't normally talk about Dan. Yeah, very true. Which and is totally a, fine. Yeah, you're getting a chance here, but also um, you got to be very careful that you don't give anything up on this uh, because really. Uh, you could run four corners and just kill this entire time off uh, and not give them any chance to have the puck, and that's the most important thing, not letting, let, letting them have the puck at all, but realistically, this one's over anyway. Door with Spooner. Played down low for Spooner, backhand score. Well, that was too easy. Well, when he got down low, that was just... That was not... I, Not well played by in all honest, the Wildcats at all. In all honesty, yeah. whether it is Kent or Hawthorne, no. you're gonna get you're gonna need better goaltending. Yeah, no question. It's made no difference that the Mavericks have popped through now with their seventh goal power play tally by Spooner, his second of the night. Now he just went right down the middle and treated them very badly. Mavericks two for five with the man advantage and Spooner with a two goal night now has eight on the season. Near side, Hukinson will catch up to it and dump it into the zone. Dewar getting a single assist on the play at this point. Northern Michigan the other way with some numbers, but Carroll will come back for the Mavericks. Spooner is there as well. Hukinson, turnover. Lowen with the shot, and Dryden McKay, who has had a pretty quiet third period here, makes the glove save. Well, he had a very busy first 10 yeah. minutes of the game, 14 shots on goal in the first period. But after that, things have calmed down quite a bit. He's uh, faced 11 shots ever since the first 10 minutes of the, of the period of the first period. Mavericks win the draw. McNeely off the boards is able to clear as we're down to 120. McNeely comes back. Chipped off the boards by Lutz, but not out. Sent wide. Zmolik ahead for Dallas Drads. Unable to find puck possession. Will be brought back the other way. Carried into the zone by Brandon Schultz. Smolik for the Mavericks. Dallas Gerrads, and he'll just dump it in. And again, now that we're down to 45 seconds left, Mavericks with a quick change, and they'll get set for hopefully what would be a sweep tomorrow night. Spooner taps it ahead. Schultz is able to clear, played it ahead. Long shot taken there by Raider is wide. It comes back the other way. Spooner. Just drive it in. Van Unen brings it in, but it's tapped away by Hukinson. Out in front, there's a one timer that's up high, taken by Raider in the corner. Sure, it's cleared by the Mavericks, and that will do it. In uh, what was a rather interesting contest here tonight, had a flurry of goals in the second, a wild pace to the first, and when things come down, the Mavericks with three specialty goals tonight, two power play tallies and one shorthanded goal, and that propels them to what ends up being a 7-3 win over Northern Michigan in the first of this two-game series. You saw what we will have coming up for you. The intermission will lead things off with Dan McCarger talking to Maverick head coach Mike Hastings one more time. Our score here tonight, it was Minnesota State 7 and Northern Michigan 3. We'll take a break and come back with our post game show. Event Center, 
Maverick Hockey Weekend continues. The Mavericks win tonight 7-3, to the final score over the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. And Maverick Hockey coach Mike Hastings joins us now. A couple of sh uh, power play goals, a shorthanded goal, and coach an all-around very solid effort in front of a very loud crowd tonight here in Mankato. Yeah, they were into it. And it was nice for us to, uh, to get off to a good start. It's something that we've been trying to remedy a little bit here in the last few weeks and so it was nice to be back at home be welcomed by the group that was here tonight and uh, it was a big win for us your junior class was very big tonight yeah and you know it's it for us to get back to where we want to be is is we need uh, depth scoring wise we need depth from the guys that uh you know to, to see jake uremko come back and julian napravna come back and make the play to connor mackey that he did and um, you know what? We need different people every night, and that's starting to happen for us a little bit more often. Uh, as, like I said, Josh French coming back, and he might not have showed up on the score sheet, but he uh, definitely had a big impact in the game. I thought our penalty killing was uh, outstanding. We, we, we had to do it a little too much, uh, but hopefully we can make an adjustment and be better at that tomorrow. There were a couple of head scratchers throughout the game, Mike, that we might want to talk about sometime, not on the air, but uh, I think uh, everybody at a couple of times this evening is going, what is going on out here? Uh, were, you, were you listening on the bench? <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, you know what? I'm just glad the, way the, the guys handled some adversity tonight, and you have to. And so as you continue to march on at this time of the year, they keep getting more important. Uh, that was a really big three points. We're going to have to get a reset. We're going to have to be better tomorrow. But um, tonight I want the guys to enjoy this one. When you made it 5-3, there was a huge back check on a play where there was an open net. And if that back check doesn't happen, it maybe it's a 5-4 game and it, it changes the game around. It's sometimes even the little things in a game that ends up being 7-3 that can make a difference. Actually, it's a lot of the little things. And, and I appreciate you bringing that up. It was good. Uh, for some of our guys to contribute defensively and, and be rewarded just from the idea of getting more ice time. And you saw that group at the end, the, the, the two lines that were rolled there over the last few minutes. And seeing Jared Spooner go out and score a power play goal was very big for us. And hopefully it, it continues to bolster his confidence because we're going to need him down the road. Well, congratulations on a big victory tonight, 7-3, the final score. We'll talk with you tomorrow evening before the game uh, and uh, game of 6.07 tomorrow night. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night. That's Maverick Hockey Coach Mike Hastings. Again, the final score this evening, 7-3. The Mavericks over the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. We'll take a break and come back. We'll have highlights, out-of-town scores, and more on Maverick Hockey Weekend. Biology professors at Minnesota State Mankato had a big 